Hello, hello. Hello! Hey. Hello. Hello, everybody. Hello. How are we? Just once, I want you to say hello one time and not three. I can't do it. I can't do it, dude. Uh, For once, I want Tamar to shout, you know, shout himself out. You know, uh, these things can't happen on this show. Uh, (laughs) It's not allowed. (laughs) It's the law. So, how is everyone? um, Yeah? No, sorry, I go. uh, No, it's okay. You're like Boyle on Brooklyn Nine-Nine when they're like, he has to say gobble, gobble, gobble. He can't just say gobble, gobble. I haven't, I haven't watched it. Yeah, <laughs> I haven't watched he definitely it. has. Not I many thought. people here have seen that. I can tell. I, have, I, uh, I know who the person I is, but oh, I it's seen good. That. It's a good show. You should all watch it. It's a great show. I Everyone. think I've seen a little bit. Of it. It's got the guy from like Lonely Island, in it right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> the desperation in your voice when you said it's a good show <laughs> <laughs> because it's like one of my favorite shows ever, and they actually finished it and it has a good ending. It's oh, incredible. that's satisfying. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah, that's like a unicorn. That's now, Dodger's right? shout out for the day. Yeah, there's my shout out. You should all watch Everyone Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Brooklyn Nine-Nine. It's very good. <laughs> yeah, Amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, I have another show. Sense. Yeah, go. This is good. This is good. Out. So, yeah, here we go. <laughs> here we go. Uh, my, my kid and I found a show today that's basically The Office, except with a bunch of Australian children at recess. And it's, called, like, and it's called Little Lunch, and you should all watch it. I want to watch that this. Sound amazing. I need to yeah. watch this. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I need to watch this. It what built for kids? Oh, that's genius. That's, yeah, cool. that's amazing. I, that's such yeah, a good idea. Happens in it that's like huh. that I would age restrict at all. It's just oh my god. A bunch I want to watch kids this. Playing to camera and We're telling all, like, weird stories right about recess. <laughs> it's great. It's incredible. Very good. Oh my god, amazing. Well, uh, welcome out to episode five, everyone. Um, camera. Oh, did the camera oh die? My... Oh, no, it... no, it just fell. It fell. No. It... There it... it decided ah. to leap to death. Me at the bottom of the chip bag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nice. Me at the bottom of the chip bag is so good. Oh my god. Oh, dear. Um, Oh my god. <laughs> Do you stop dropping us! <laughs> Bro! Dude. <Motion> sick now. Um, <laughs> oh my god. I completely forgot my, my, my head Everything's now. Everything's fine. Um, hello! So, um. Hello! This is a mess. It's uh, okay. Yeah. It's great. It's great. So. Well, glad to episode five, everyone. Uh, just to give you a little bit of a pre-warning as well. If there's any tech issues or something that like looks a little bit out of frame or anything like that, uh, my SSD died this? on Friday, and oh, yeah. so I've had to redo like everything on my computer. So uh, there might be a few little weird errors here and there, uh, but you know, just bear with us. Um, what the fuck? How did the fuck do you make Sam, this? what is <laughs> happening to you? <laughs> in an earthquake right now. <laughs> I'm trying to make it stay on the mono. This is the most boomer Sam has ever come up to me. Like, ever. <laughs> <laughs> just like, what the Wait, fuck I'm like, so te- I'm like so tech challenged. You have no idea. <laughs> well, at least two of oh us. God. I'm, the worst. I'm so bad. <laughs> oh my god. Well, hi, yeah. Sorry. Hi, bud. Uh, I'm genuinely concerned there. No, 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 no. I, 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 some of the cameras are out of frame, so I'm just messing with them. Um, we do have a full oh house. Tomorrow's here. Tomorrow, can you talk for a second? We'll see if your thing lights up. Yeah. Hey. There you go. Good. 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 It works. Um, well. Uh, oh, threes. Good. 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 Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. Hello. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Everything should be gobble, threes. Gobble. 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 Like gobble. Gobble. Oh, gobble. I got the reference now. Um, <laughs> So, uh, if you are first time here, this is a long-running D&D show, uh, our second campaign, but a totally different story, and a uh, new set of characters, but the same players and DM. So, welcome in. Uh, if we have nothing to shower other than Brooklyn Nine-Nine and uh, The Office for Australians. A little lunch. A uh, little lunch, lunch, that's what it's called. Uh, a little lunch. Has anyone got anything else they want to shout? Or should we get started? No, that feels great. If you take your painkillers with Monster, that you like, oh my god! It gives you more of a kick. The blurry camera is just <laughs> I adding just gotta, to this I've, sentiment. I've just got to say, so I'm gonna like say, we, you, don't you have to say that that's a joke because you're out doing yeah, a yeah, joke? Yeah, 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 just, just to say, we, we, this is not medical advice. We don't condone <laughs> that. No, <laughs> the rest of us can have to go down. Sam accidentally did that. <laughs> we do not condone yeah, that. Experiment with your med pills, I guess. <laughs> have fun. 
<laughs> Don't do that. Why are we now? Did I really? Did I drop? No, no, you're good. You're good now. No, it's right. okay. it was just when you, you said rays. that, which <laughs> made it blurred so out funnier. like it was a side character. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is this your phone camera or your other camera? <laughs> Oh my god! No, I mean, look, they look good quality regardless. But it's because his lights out. I got the new, I got the new Elgato. Uh, oh, that one. one. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. my lights and Brooks' lights broke today. Yeah. Like the electrics failed or something. Tech so issues for everyone. My cameras. I had all my settings to use the natural light that doesn't exist. So now I'm trying to like night NVG mode my camera so that yeah, you don't yeah, see yeah. a pair of eyes. I feel like there's a ghost in your house that only is there to torture you. <laughs> like, pull lights out or break stuff. Oh my god. Nice. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. That's perfect. <laughs> That's based on D&D. &D. Uh, okay. Uh, well, uh, let me move you guys by the monitor so I can bring up my notes. And we'll get started with episode five of Sunfall. The fuck? Oh my god. Not you too, Shane. Because You're not allowed to take issues next. I know, it's weird, oh. right? I... Okay. The math doesn't really measure out either, because it's, it's, we're not even, it's not even been a month, but we're actually on episode five. See, I couldn't work it out. Whoa. Huh? Don't worry. How's that work? <laughs> Time is weird. Okay. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> so. Rumor has it. That your group. I just skipped a couple of days, teleporting across Hyaloma, from all weathers, to the region of the Strifelands. Sorry, I was distracted by Sans Gam for a second. Uh, I saw Brie laughing. I tried to look, I tried to look the other side and saw Brie laughing. Too tired to I'm losing my mind. <laughs> I feel like we have to put an epilepsy warning if you do that because it's so bright. <laughs> no. um, you had traveled across the regions from, from <clears throat> all weathers to the strife lands, woken up outside of the House of Silhouettes, the place where people go to be forgotten. There, with a couple of sisters uh, of the house, you wanted a journey to the local town, a town which teleports and can move across the entire region to find your grounding, buy some supplies. On the path, you heard someone calling for help. Rushing into the woodland, you found a young uh, half-elf named Daniuk who was tied up against a tree, and gnolls were feasting on the horses and the corpses of those who were attacked. You rescued him. He asked for your aid in getting back three other companions, which had been taken off into the gnolls' territory. Wisely choosing to rest your head, gain a little bit of momentum <clears throat> and, and, and recover yourselves, you decided to move to the town first, see if you could get help there. In the town, Daniuk uh, journeyed up to the, the main tower and to, to ask and request for help uh, with the promise from Morgane that in the morning you'd meet and hunt down the gnolls. Meanwhile, the rest of you decided to send letters, <coughs> find your footing in this town, Sigenblatt. You went through a variety of different shops, ending in the magical shop and... Traded some beans for a fortune cookie. You've stepped down to the road again. You've bought a few supplies, be it potions. You've got a some string, some thread, some information. But you find yourselves in the town. What would you like to do? It's uh, it's probably about 4 p.m. by this point. Five, maybe. Mm -hmm. Um... Do we want to... Does anybody need to go to any other <clears throat> shop? Do we want to go see what that tower's about? Does anyone have any errands left to run? Is there, like, a schedule of when this place teleports? What if we want to, like, head out of town for a minute and then we right. come back and it's a crater, you know? There, Do you it's know? broken, though, yeah, correct? I think the right. schedule's on hold <clears throat> for a little. The, um, the shopkeeper in the magic shop told me that... I think we already knew, right? The device is broken. There's actually a bounty for it. Um, and Andrasa looks around. It seems like it might not be broken, but stolen. Maybe we take a look at that bounty. We'll hitch a ride where it's going next. Be faster than walking. <clears throat> Do we have any idea of where to go for that? 
Uh, Does anyone know who has it? You know that there's a bounty office. Uh, the Heroes are Bound is a bounty station. You were told by the guard, uh, the Svart guard <clears throat> that, that introduced you when you first came in, that you can head there if you want to pick up local bounties of the area to earn some coin. It's kind of an adventurous stop-off point that they update wherever they land. <clears throat> I, mean, I don't really know how to find stolen items, but it could be useful to have a person in charge owing us a favor. Hmm. Let's check the bounty then. See if it says anything that we don't know. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Here is a bound um, is kind of in the central portion of the street on the right side. Uh, it's a smaller building. It's, it doesn't look to be uh, kind of a, a broader shop. It doesn't have uh, wares hanging out. It's, it seems to have kind of almost like a circular staircase, treating it like a, like a the smaller portion of a tower, almost like if you were to cut the top of a tower and, uh, and just place it onto the ground with a staircase that leads around the side to an oval door about six foot high. Inside, um, you can see on the window as well as you'd walk up towards it, um, it says, Bounties Available. And it has a number below it in Elvish. It's the number for three. The shop itself oh. on the inside is quaint. Uh, <clears throat> a little bit dark um, with uh, a rounded desk in the center. Almost like an information center. Um, you can see across the wall various trophies or plaques. And a few like... And when I say trophies, not, not like uh, trophies of uh, uh, sporting variety. More so trophies of like skulls of some animals or some stuffed... Uh, taxidermy. You can see uh, a claw on the wall. Um, attached, you can see, if, if you like, kind of words beneath one, you can see one that says cockatrice claw, and it has kind of little curled claw, uh, claw on the side. Um, you can see the head of this owl bear just kind of stitched to the side. But in the circular portion, um, behind a desk, you can see uh, a human woman. She's got streaks of grey in her hair, otherwise black hair, um, kind of tied up in a bun. Um, tough looking, kind of broader um, square jaw with a kind of uh, a curling scar on her cheek that looks like there's two fainter ones next to it as well. Almost like she'd got cut herself. Um, she stands in the middle and she's kind of just organizing through a coin and kind of counting it and you can just see her. One, two, three. She looks up. One moment. <laughs> Puts the coin underneath the desk and kind of looks to your group. How can I help? Hmm. We're here to find out about some bounties. We've got three at the moment. Uh, currently, she kind of leans by, uh, below the desk and kind of presses into this little crystal. You see one <clears> wall <throat> just open, almost like the, the, the wallpaper itself separates. And across it, you can just see three parchments kind of gleaming. Uh, the spell light casts them that kind of creates a bit of a, uh, almost like a wave of light that comes out. This dimly lit room now becoming... Um, more spotlighted on this one wall. You can see these three posters. One uh, says head to the Shadowstone Tower. The second one says spider infested tunnel. And the third one says the basilisk fish. You can inquire about any of the bounties if you wish. They're all in the local area. This is your first time in Sigenbrat. It is quite lovely. Looks around. My name's Chantry. I run Heroes Abound. These bounties are three of five we've had since we arrived here. Two of them were fulfilled. If you are to pick up a bounty, I can tell you the coin of each. We are said to move soon, but I imagine that, uh, well, she taps on the desk and you can see like almost like lighting up on the first bounty where it says head to the Shadowstone Tower. And she, you can see it kind of like boom, boom, ping up on the light. Only after this one's done, though. So feel free to grab a bounty. I'll tell you the price, tell you about it. We can make a deal. If you are looking yeah. to make a few coins. What's the situation with the uh, Shadowstone one? Shadowstone one, head of our town, mm -hmm. has requested that you speak personally to him. It's not an open bounty per se. It's one that you have to collaborate with him. Here's the pricing structure for it, but I believe it is to do with, well, our issue here in town. 
But if you go there, say you're looking for the bounty, you'll be escorted inside. You can speak to our dear mayor of our town. What's his name? Good question. Uh, <laughs> I've got a very long shit. I hate him. I don't uh, know. His name is Salandru. Lord Salandru. Salandru. Excellent. All right. What about that? What's... I don't know. Let's just tell us about all of them. What's the second one, Matt? Mm. Sure. Second one is a spider-infested tunnel. There's a large tunnel that leads up Northward, northeast of here. We've known it to be. It's, a, it's an old one. We don't use it anymore on the road. It's been infested with spiders for quite some time. Uh, of the giant variety, of course. They haven't disturbed us. Uh, they don't disturb the local populace around here. The villagers are actually quite fine with it. They keep away some of the nasty pests of the area. Uh, they mostly feed on anything that kind of wanders and, and, and beasts. But mostly stay away from civilization. That was until recently. This was the first bounty to come in. When we first arrived, they were they were pretty quick to tell us about it a month ago. Spiders have become bolder. Exhibited unusual behavior, some mutations. Uh, some of them are managing to, they, when they bite something, it creates fire. Some of them, when they bite, electricity spans off of them. We fear that something has happened to their nest and they've become a little bit mm, provoked, aggressive. So... This one is for 500 gold pieces, along with one horse and a small cart of food provided by Bootville Village. Oh, dang. All right. How about that, what is uh, this basilisk fish? What's That's this right. about? Yep, uh, this one's located over the river, crossing by the Dipping Bridge. Recently, it was a, well, until recently, it was a fishing spot. But now it's been taken over by a creature that we do not know the variety of. The creature has apparently been grabbing creatures from the shore and dragged them underwater. It turns them into stone and then feasts on them over a longer period of time. We believe it to be, at the very least, aquatic, maybe amphibious. Some boldness from the creature recently has had it drag in fishermen. This one, by the Fisherfolk Company of Westvine, is 400 gold and the finest fishing rod they have to offer. It supposedly has grown a hunger for humans, gnomes, and dwarves so far. It killed one elf, but did not eat them. Oh. Hmm. <clears throat> right. The second one is to the northeast, you said? Uh, when you say second, right. the spider one, northeast, yeah. Oh, sorry, yeah, the spider one. And then the Dripping Bridge, bridge one would be to the west. What direction did we come from? Uh, you came from south uh, west, uh, but not far, not very far. Okay, all right. Because these are all kind of localized bounties, right? I'm just asking because we're going to be backtracking a little to take care of yeah. these knolls, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so, if you're interested, what do we do? Do we have to sign up or something, or do we just go find it and do it? And I'll give you a back, token or? just to let you know that you're on it. Um, if for some reason, we manage to get moving again. The token will light up in a grey. If it does that, right. it means you have one day to get back to us. Otherwise, I'm afraid the bounty's over. We also flash the the, the light in the in the token will entirely die off if the bounty is completed. Though I can tell you right now, we've got no one coming in. So, has no one else attempted these bounties? No, no, the other two bounties we had were smaller um, in nature, a bit quicker. One of them was just to scare off a local owlbear, but only a young one. And the other one was to hunt down a couple of bandits, <coughs> two of them, thieves. Those ones are already picked up. Most people try to avoid the bigger ones like this. You need a proper Wait, So uh, no one is working on the bounty to get this place moving again? No, adventurers have come on through, and Salandro doesn't like to spend out the spot. He's been organizing a few of them and he's had a couple of them scout out but he lost one of them so he's been a bit reserved hoping that someone would come on by what do we need to how do we prove something's done <clears throat> excuse me it's a good question uh it depends on the bounty with the spider infested tunnel uh if you could bring back some spider parts ideally find the source of it 
We can pay you. Um, we'll check in ourselves. If we find out that it was a lie and the creatures are still there and it wasn't completed, you will be blacklisted across all of the guilds of bounty hunters and adventurers. Right. Is there a... Is there a penalty or something like, what if we just take all three because we're in the area, but we can only do, you know, I don't know, we do one and then you... Taking the bounty is free. It's bad. There's no down payment. We There's no expectation of you to fulfill it. <laughs> can multiple right. parties pick up the same bounty? They can indeed. Okay. We have a, uh, we don't have a policy for uh, exclusivity here. And I think for efficiency's sake, we should just take all three because we're going to be around and what if we, you know, get one done and we're like, oh, we could have taken that. Very well. She reaches under and then gathers these three coins. They look almost like gold coins, um, but they've they, the symbols on them instead show a little kind of question mark. Um, and on the other side, you can see it's kind of got a, a an X. Um, it's almost glowing a soft red. It, she puts something as it stops glowing the red. That means the bounty is fulfilled. Pulls over the other side. The question mark shows that starts glowing gray. Then you know that we're moving in a day. Okay. Is there a way to gauge the difficulty of a bounty? You know, like one star, easy. <laughs> Mostly we go off of the gold that's offered. Um, sometimes okay. we've had bounties which have offered far more gold for an easy job. But it's all down to whoever's putting the uh, the bounty across. Uh, Boo Boo Village has come together and collected most of their gold uh, to have this one fulfilled because it's ruining their pretty much their entire summer's harvest. A lot of their livestock have been hunted by the spiders, so... For them, it's a case of, uh... Desperacy. But sometimes we'll have a noble come through who might drop down a thousand gold just to kill one thing. It depends. Uh, we would rate these ones, though, based on the creatures. The spider one, probably a little bit more difficult just due to the fact that it's... Seems to be a, uh, a larger nest of them. Alright. About how... Do you know about how long it takes to get to that spider cave or how long it takes to get to that fishing spot all of these are within a few Can hours of this of this area uh, i think uh the fish one might take you a little bit longer probably five hours but the spider infested tunnel was not two hours away all right okay anybody have any questions hmm. all right well thank you for the tokens and the information of course. And, uh... We'll have your payment for you if you complete them. Again, uh, welcome to bring back uh, any parts to help uh, collaborate. It does help with us. But we do have people that will go and check. All right. Well, good luck out there, adventurers. Goes back to kind of organizing their coins and counting through. Labeling them um, back. As we're leaving... Mm -hmm. uh... V is going to look to the group and with like a puzzled look on her face. I do not understand why no one seems in a rush to get this place moving again. I find that weird too. It is a bit weird. Well, uh, yeah. maybe there's something we'll find out when we talk to the mayor. Right. The shopkeeper said that the device was stolen, and then that Lord was trying to keep that uh, quiet. So maybe he's just embarrassed, and he doesn't really know how to write. If you say it's broken, someone's like, well, I can fix things, but you don't have it. I don't know. If we go over and ask him now, we want to take a little, I don't know, get something to eat. We might rest. as well ask him. And that way we can make our plans for what we were going to do tomorrow, because mm -hmm. it sounds like we've been promised to help right, with that, a couple that. of things now. <clears throat> All right, well, let's go find out. Just go to this tower. Clarify, I promised I would help him at sunrise. It doesn't mean that you need to. Well, that's fair, but also it would be kind of rude to not help. I'll also be completely honest, or Morgane, I would rather stick by you. I have no idea where I am, and I trust you to keep people safe. Mm 
I would argue you have more of an idea than I do. However, I will keep you safe. Thank you. <clears throat> so the mayor? Let's go. Yeah. Yeah, at the end of the street when you come out, Flouncy taking down. a right. Um, you can see the, the, the town again is quite quiet, uh, with occasionally merchants coming in out or some of the people that live there moving in and kind of grabbing basic supplies from the general store. But otherwise, um, pretty quiet at this point. The only building that's really got any liveness to it, and even then it's fairly um, uh, dim in comparison to most taverns, is the tavern, um, the bloated billet. But at the end of the street, you can see the black and brick tower wide at the base with a taller tower jutting from the middle um, and a small disc shape at the top. Uh, it's unusually outcast, this building, among the kind of lighter, more familiar stones of the area you're in. Um, as you kind of approach it, you'd see several, three or four, outside the, the staircase of this leading up to the tower, you see these svarts, the, the little blue kind of almost large-headed goblin creatures uh, that you saw before. Um, but these ones are wearing kind of plated armor that's been specifically fitted for them. You see it's like a deep gray armor. They're holding spears and like a shield on their, their arm, a kite shield. Um, they stand there waiting. Uh, their helmet's a little bit kind of... You can see it's definitely been designed for their heads. Um, and you can see it kind of being modeled around them. And it kind of creates a, a much taller head effect with like kind, of, kind of a little plumed feather on the top. It seems almost ornamental armor as opposed to um, uh, useful, if you wish. Um... They kind of stand there plainly waiting at the base of the tower. Um, and you can see at the base of it, there's almost this this kind of larger door, which is entirely black, obsidian black, with no seam down the middle and no handle. One of the guards stand outside and goes, <clears throat> Yes. Hello, we're here to um, talk to your lord about that bounty. All right. You may go up if you will. Lord Salandro is on the base of the tower. Please do not try anything. We will be watching. All right. Fantastic, dear. Thank you. She just starts to walk in. <laughs> Walks, yeah. <laughs> See him kind of lift up his arm and he speaks like an, a little kind of whispered tone. Um, and the door goes, you just see this kind of golden trim come around the sides of the door and then once down the middle and it goes and opens for you. Inside, you can see it's a series of bookshelves. Um, it's like a great library on the, in the middle, um, all kind of scattered up the wall going a good, probably 40 feet up a series of books, scrolls, all sorts. Um, in the center is kind of this rounded platform with nothing on it um, other than this, uh, like a dim star shape. Um, it, when I say dim as well, it almost looks like it draws in light. It's this great star on the ground, seven-pointed star um, that almost sucks in some of the light. Uh, but it has like a great seam around it as well. It almost looks like it's a great mat in the middle of the room. And around that, you see a series of kind of like desks which have been set up with chairs in front of them. Um, along with like a greater one in the back of the room. Walking in the center though, around this kind of comfortable torch lit tower, you can see a Shadakai similar to uh, Indrasa, uh, pale skin, black eyes, slender features. Um, half his face looks almost, almost like burned flesh, but it almost looks like when the light hits him, it bounces around this portion of his face, kind of cutting off his left eye, the top of his forehead and his, his cheek, uh, cutting off at the corner of his mouth. You can see almost like the flesh underneath looks a little bit rotten or a little bit kind of burnt away. But almost like a darkness holds on his face. His hair tied up um, in, a, in a knot. Um, it's contrast to it. It's long and white, um, shaven on the, on the sides and kind of turned into like a little bit of a, a man bun at the back. He wears long black uh, leathered outfit. Um, but almost like trimming for a lord. It's it's uh, designed to kind of fit him white well. And he wears a long kind of cloak on his left shoulder on the same side as the, the darkness. In his hands, he's holding a book with one hand and kind of tracing it with the other finger. You can see his fingers. Uh, he's got almost like this little ring on at the end of his finger, almost like a thimble. Uh, and that's got the light spell cast on it. He's just tracing the book, standing to like a dark corner of the room, going through as you enter. 
He closes the book shut and kind of peers over his head, having heard the door open. Sees your group approach. Walks over and places the book onto a kind of a, an outer shelf and then uses a mage hand to lift it 30 feet up and place on a higher up shelf. He turns and kind of walks towards the center of the room and looks across all of you. You look like an unusual sort. What business do you have? Uh, if you are to be welcomed in here, I imagine you'll hear about the bounty. We are. I'd right, come in. He walks over towards his desk, uh, snaps his finger, and you can just see these chairs go off of the top of these shelves and kind of land down. Uh, only four of them, but four kind of stationed around his desk. He walks around the other side of the desk. The desk is completely clear. Um, it is it is a similar black stone to the rest of the walls, um, but on the surface, you can see um, elvish writing. But it's all kind of gibberish. It's like runes uh, of magic. Uh, he sits down his chair, which is a longer, kind of taller chair, almost throne-like. Um, and it goes a good two feet above him in almost like a triangular shape. He sits down and sits with a kind of a tall posture, straightening his back and looks across all of you. Do you have a seat? I'm afraid that I only have the four. Two of you have to stand. That's fine. Indrasa says as she sits down. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, Carlisle stand. V will stand. Tackle sit. Nice. Okay, we'll also stand. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll take two chairs, one for my feet, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah dude. You look so That's cool. So good. <laughs> That's perfect. Well, welcome to our town. Thank you. Are you adventurers? Of a sort. Hmm. Well. I am in need of arms. I need of soldiers, people that can hunt down bandits. Bandits are your problem. Primarily. Oh, the bounty was cleared. Right? You said there was a... Not one too that common themes. That one of the ones that... Oh. This one's a little bit more serious. Uh, a company of them. When we moved here, we had a group of adventurers come through. A small group. They called themselves the Rat Tails. We believe it is to be them that had stolen it. I had an orb that allowed me to transfer our location of this town into another location of my desire. I woke right. 6 a.m. at the crack of dawn and it was gone. From here in my office, in the top end. He points over to the circular section of the tower in the middle. That is an elevator that brings me up to my quarters. They somehow got in there without me waking and stole the orb. What sort of security measures did you have on this orb? I had some magical measures. I had the alarm spell cast always on my elevator to wake me when it went off, along with the Savard guards at all hours of the day. The alarm not... It did not trigger. Go off. Hmm. How well trained are these guards? They do well enough. Mostly I needed myself to wake so I could deal with whoever might have interfered themselves, but they do well enough. They handled themselves in the Underdark when I got them. We don't come across many who are willing to stand up to our town. It's a difficult one to attack for unorganized groups, and organized groups mostly earn from our presence in their area. It is not often we did come guards, across thieves. Did the guards say they let anyone in? Do they remember anything? They saw nothing. It was a clear night, a quiet one. When we woke, it was gone. That door points backwards the only way in. The only way in. No windows on my tower. No entrances from the outside. How and long is the orb? <laughs> That's exactly what I was just going to ask. What did you ask for? How, How large is this orb? orb? Like, it's large and fits. in a bag. Small. Yeah. Oh. oh. All right. Well, was it taken? Where? Upstairs. When? When? It would have been two, three weeks ago. It was early on in our 
stay here. What makes you think it was this this rat tail group? There is a bard in town who knows of the local problems, the local companies, those to watch out for. I have not managed to get much information out of him. He does not favor my town. I've allowed him to stay because he spends coin a plenty. His name is Silas the Harp. He's currently resided inside longer than the road. He gave me that information alone. Told me I should be watching out for them. When I tried to extract more information, he was rather rude about it. I would have had him imprisoned, but we do not keep prisons here. I would have had him expelled from the town, but he was spending coin. Besides, if he's the only one who is knowledgeable, I wanted to keep him under my nose where I could see him. That way, if I knew he was involved... Do you have a, so do I you have a history with him? Have, has he been here before? Was that the first time you've... Met it is him? more a history of Bards. Mm. Fair enough. Uh, can I ask, they said that no one else has taken this bounty. You don't seem to be in a rush to be getting out of here. Otherwise, there would be a bit more hubbub over taking it. Partially true. There has been no one who has been willing to go out and, and search for it. I've sent some of my own guards, though they have been unsuccessful. Unsuccessful dead? Unsuccessful came back one empty dead. handed? The town is not in a panic over this. It is not worried about this because I keep it that way. I let them know that it is being handled. It is not. Currently, they believe we are just delayed. If it gets out that I have no means of retrieving this and I do not have the information, we will start to lose these shops. You see, it is a symbiosis that keeps them here. They earn good coin by traveling. They see the world by traveling. We cannot travel. We cannot run our town. And quite frankly, the Strifelands is our least profitable area. Currently, I'm appeasing them by allowing them to take some coin from my coffers and with the promise that it would be paid back. All right. Well, how many people are in this, this group of adventurers? That is knowledge I did not have. Though I imagine right. the bard does. Do you... Or does the bard, I guess, know where they would have gone? Are we just to go on a wild goose chase? This is what I'm hoping. Any direction? Currently, I've... All right. Wrote letters to those in Sunshade, the town of Sunshade, to ask for mercenaries or help there, pay coin there, but they've had their own issues with gnolls recently. Or if their soldiers have been fighting that. There's mercenary work to be had. However, no mercenaries in the area. We do have a few in town that are stationed here. Though a small group in the Wayward Souls. I was going to wait before hiring them. Oh, I might be a bit above their difficulty level. They are seasoned soldiers, but singular mercenaries. If we would prefer, I can the, hire them. What are the terms of this bounty? What's it worth? We are scheduled to go to Horizons Rest next. However... We're in Horizons Rest, sorry. Bring out my map. Uh, he... Lifts his kind of like his his own map, kind of rivals it out, and uh, and kind of points to Horizons Rest. And you'd see on the map. I'll bring you guys to it. Uh, he points just west of Sailor's Will, and points to like a nearer river. What's oh, that? No. The eastern portion of it. However, huh. as I know. We have one of the quickest ways of transporting across the land. I am willing to transport wherever you need to go. If you need to go somewhere. If you are not looking to travel, you are locals. Then 
I would give you a thousand gold pieces. Otherwise, in both scenarios, whatever you choose of those two, I'm allowing a 10% discount across all shops whenever you're shopping here in Sigmund Permanently. Hmm. All right. Um, hmm. You are stuck here like sitting grubs this town. Are you not concerned they will come back for more? I do not believe they are an army. Though, the bard says that there is a larger company of them. If they do attack, we are high up walls. Our walls are reinforced. And we have measures to defend our town. Um, what kind of... is this... Sorry. Did you make this orb? Like, can anyone use it? I stole it. Oh, well done. <laughs> This tower, this town is from the Shadowfell. Specifically the tower. Huh. I was a servant there. Whose collection is all this? Waves hand vaguely at books. It would also be my former masters. Hmm. Are they still kicking? I figure they would be mad trying to find this place. I believe so. Or at least they've not found me. But my hey. master was powerful, and in the Shadowfell I served him well, though he was cruel. I stole his device that allowed him to teleport between planes, and I've since changed the properties of the orb. Allows me to transport to anywhere on this plane, to specific locations that I place wounds upon. Think of them like teleportation circles, they're quicker to make. Can it still do the former ability? Plane if you were shifting? to remove my collaborations to it, yes. Huh. Interesting. Thank you, you for your candor. You didn't like... You didn't have the directions written down somewhere easily accessible, did you? Like, would they have known... The directions to my orb? The orb, right. No. Though it was kept up in my quarters. All right, well, I guess we talk to this Silas, Silas the Bard? Silas the Harp is what he's referring Silas to. Silas the Harp. A Bard, the Harp. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're in agreement. This is acceptable terms. I think so. We can either Although we can talk if we'd like. Yeah. Actually, that's a good idea. Do you mind if we sidebar? For free. We sidebar. <laughs> yeah, you can sort of win to talk about this yourself. Yeah. So we we either um a thousand gold. And then we can hitch a ride to Horizon's Rest next. Or... He'll take us anywhere. To give you an above... Terms? Above board moment as well, if, you, if you'd like yes. to kind of get a general idea here as well. Um, if you do accept that deal, uh, um, you can think about it out of character as well. Um, as basically me as the DM, sent you as the players, if there's anywhere in the world, or of High Loma that is... Uh, that you'd like to go and adventure in next, you can use that as a means of travel. Um, mm. okay. You won't be able to pick the specific spot in that region, but you would be able to transport to any region okay. and begin another adventure there if you wish. So, oh, and 10% off shops, which is quite <sighs> good. Forever. Not just now. Mm. We don't know anything about... It might not even be this group. We don't know anything about that. We have to go talk to... The bard. Right. And there's no love lost between them, it sounds like. We should ask if there's a time sensitivity to this issue. Well, they can't go anywhere, right? So, yeah. first like of all, how long until everyone starts freaking out, though, you know? Yeah. Because realistically, we're not going to do it tomorrow. We've got a date tomorrow. 
with some gnolls. Right. But it sounds like we're the only ones who are going to potentially do anything about this anyway. So they're operating on our timetable. True. Gathering information will take time regardless. I think it will as well. I think it was a good idea to get those other tokens too in case we wind up near one of those. Again, efficiency makes sense. All right. Well, we can tell him it's fine and then go to the tavern. Hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. All okay. right. I think Indrasa probably fairly imperiously turns around. Like. He's, he sat there just straight back, kind of just, <laughs> just very <laughs> clean. <laughs> we right. agree to your terms. Right. Our terms are acceptable. <laughs> right. Um, I think this sounds acceptable to us. So we'll head to talk to this Silas and see what we find out. Do you need updates? Do you just trust us to get it done? Do you want us to check in? Let me be frank with you. I have no other options currently. There is a chance that you get this device and steal it yourself. Yeah. It would be preferable if you did not. I'm hoping our terms are acceptable. And if they are not, I am willing to discuss future terms. As is, I need no update. I need no necessary check-in. You could promptly get it done. I imagine within the week, we'll start to have to come up with more excuses. But right now, I am burning through gold, trying to keep my town alive. Understood. Good. Looks like group. All right. All right. Tavern it is. Well, to correct you, longer than road is not a tavern. Ah, the inn. Inn, separate. In, it is not an inn either. They're not even. What is it? Longer than road. Which one's which? It is a series of buildings connected together. It is for external merchants to buy a room oh, and and sell one. their means. A bard is located in there as a temporary place of, of living. I believe he is mocking. You can live in there, too. Mm, what? <laughs> Why don't you like each other? What's... That is upon my own business. Well, sure, but what if this it is, is all... irrelevant to the matter at hand. Mm. If you cannot convince him to get the information, then you will not be able to fulfill the bounty. And Rasa just grins. His ex is definitely a bard. <laughs> <laughs> I like hate bards. One hundred percent. Fair enough. I guess that's all we need to know then. Yeah, we'll see what we can do. Oh well. He stands back up and goes straight back towards the uh, the books. He wasn't doing anything at the desk, uh, so he just kind of pulls back another book and starts kind of going through and organizing it again as if. To reset as soon as you guys are done. I'll allow you to travel back into the town. All right. Because he said he had, sorry, he had an issue with all bards, right? He corrected. He doesn't like bards. Yes. He doesn't yeah. like bards, period. Yeah. yeah. He's bardist. Yeah. He is. <laughs> Do we. Have we. Have any of us heard of this Silas? Do we have any idea why. Ooh, yeah, just, Silas the harp. Like, is there a thing about um, shitty we're bards? We're very far from home, though. I don't know if any of us would have heard True. of him. Yeah, I need to just check if any of you are... Uh, like, how famous is he? <laughs> I've never heard of him. <laughs> I've never heard of him. He can't be that good. He only has w two H followers. Omega lol. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, would, I would say... Uh, let, me think, let me look through each of you. You don't come from local, not from local. What region is Desmond from initially? Bay of Progress. Then roll me a... Ironic. Oh, baby. Charisma history check. 
No let's one's go. gonna oh, believe go. Desmond go. though. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's my brother-in-law. <laughs> um, I saved I that guy once. Sufficient. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, did you yeah, it's like I know this guy, and we're like, "Sure you do, buddy." Sure you do. <laughs> <laughs> sure you do. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're the seven. You've never heard the name. I know the guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know him. You know Silas the Harp. I mean, his bard tells stories. I love stories. Mm -hmm. What does he look like? A bard, you know. Um, what color of hair does he have? I can so check him. <laughs> yeah, he can... wears a hat. <laughs> what kind of hat? <laughs> How many like times a hood? can we do group instinct? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is an intervention, Desmond. Not gonna bother anymore. <laughs> you can do a group insight so check funny. against him if you want. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll assist tomorrow because I bet this he has dude better said insight. He looks so, like a fucking bard. And Carlo Hill's yeah. giving him the eye. He idea. wears a hat. So, yeah. They wear elaborate uh, clothing. Carlo, you get throw like, insight. Who's helping Carlo? So oh, Sam. I'll help. Yeah. Uh, that gives advantage. Is anyone else helping? I'll, I'll help. help. So if bad. you help and then you help as well, you have a plus two on top of that. Oh lord! And it's a plus two on top of that. So Twenty nine. Eight thousand different hat styles. Like, does it have a feather? What about pom pom? Oh my god! Here it comes. With a twenty three uh, and a twenty seven. Uh, what would they? What would they see, Desmond? What a kind of. What do they read off of that? Um, he's not looking at anybody. He's sort of looking up a little bit, moving his head, trying to avoid as much eye contact as he can. Re recollecting ways Desmond has spoken to us before, uh, am I remembering that this is something that you've perhaps oh, this done is his before? Tell. Well, yeah. This is his tell. Aww. This is the tell. It's in the middle distance when he's lying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard to tell, though, because he doesn't have eyes, per se. Yeah, mm. definitely. But you notice, yeah. Mm. I think, oh, that despite... His Noticing Carlisle's gonna like quietly nudge Morgane, but not make a scene about this dude is just lying out of his teeth about this. Indrasa has now listed 30 different hat fashions. <laughs> like the puffy one that sort of. Yeah, sometimes you know, a feather, a sometimes corn. a. Yeah. What is it? Yeah. Yeah, it's all of those. I mean, one. we don't always wear the same clothes, you know. Bard, a bard-looking, bard-looking guy wearing a hat. Bar do you know what? what? Is this is going to be a happy like. reunion then. If you mm. do you know him personally, or yeah. if you just uh, no, not personally. I sit in the audience, oh. you know, watch his uh, oh. show. What's your favorite song that he does? The uh, <laughs> the the one with the hat and the macaroni, you know. The hat and the macaroni. Well, I'll have to ask him to sing that. It sounds great. Yeah. Look, it, it's walking. getting it's getting late, and uh, maybe we should get uh get on task, and maybe if there's time to talk about the hat and the macaroni, we can, uh, <laughs> back around. Definitely gonna ask about that macaroni song. All right. Let <laughs> me <laughs> head out. Um. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the building right next next to it is the building that's called Longer Than the Road. Um. You can see Perfect. that's kind of done as a signpost, almost like it's like a crossroads in the middle of the town, and you can see Longer Than the Road is is kind of put on it. Um. And it's it looks like it used to be an inn, a traditional inn, but it has a series of extensions, almost awkward like blocky buildings just attached to it that kind of rise up. It's the tallest building in the town outside of the tower. Um, but awkwardly so. It looks like uh, these kind of, almost like someone's built like extension bedrooms and just keep attaching them, almost like towers coming across all portions of the inn. Uh, but the main door is open, uh, allowing you to kind of walk inside and it's got that kind of quite, almost hotel lobby feel to it. Um, you'd walk in, it's <laughs> it's uh, a series of kind of doors on your side with like a pathway leading up to a <clears throat> desk um, where a series of keys are on the wall behind. Uh, a, a kind of a slender elf um, wearing quite fine clothing, uh, elderly elf though, you can see kind of where his neck's kind of protruded a little bit more, um, his eyes are kind of sunken, um, and he's, he's looking a little bit kind of grumpier and, and, uh, and kind of staring down at the end of glasses onto a bit of parchment that he's writing on. His eyes kind of flick up to you. He rolls away the parchment, puts it to the side. <clears throat> Welcome to Longer in the Road. How may I be of assistance? We're looking for Silas the Harp. Yes, he is in room number seven. Shall I tell him you're coming? What business do you have? We just need to ask him a couple of questions. 
What are you doing? Uh, he leans down to kind of... Almost these... You see a series of these, like, circular buttons um, with almost, like, emerald gemstones encrusted onto them. Not quite gems, but, like, almost like a coloring. Um, almost like it's glass. Green glass. And then he presses on the seventh one. And you hear his voice kind of, like, kind of echo into it. Master Silas, we have several people here to see you. Lifts it. Waits a moment. As if he's listening. And presses it again. Yes, it believes to be one of them is a... An elven lady and some fineries. One of them seems to be a soldier of sorts. One of them, I'm not too sure. I has the features of a creature to her. Another is a automaton. One seems to be a hobgoblin, and the other one is pale, wearing black, dark hair. Lifts it. One moment, please. Press again. Of course, Master Cyrus. Lifts it. Room seven. Thank you. <clears throat> you see, you're looking at the doors that I pressed back. Corridors that lead up, like having like here's to rooms like four to through to sixteen. It's kind of built like almost like a hotel where you can kind of go through and and go to all these different rooms. Um, seven's one of the closer ones uh, that you could see in on as a total. Uh, there would have been about thirty of them. There was like rows of ten, and three rows, um, but off to one of the sides you'd find room seven. Um, you'd hear the door kind of unlock by going over there, and then um, it opens, and inside is. Very much like uh, someone's made an in-room, uh, less so than kind of a merchant stop or a shop. It is a bed over to one corner, uh, a little desk, a small little kind of stage area in the corner uh, with stairs leading up to it. Um, you see a harp in the room. You see oh, three types of harp. There's kind of one skinnier one, a much kind of wider D-shaped harp, and then um, a kind of a very small one that you kind of wear almost under your neck. Uh, you can see a violin and then also a flute on the side as well. And it's kind of almost like it's it's, it's almost like a practice room for him. Um, and you would see kind of wandering into the middle of the room, a bit confused by by the guests coming in. Uh, middle aged human. Uh, completely gray beard, but black hair with kind of streaks of gray in it. Um, you'd see him kind of a very handsome figure with with like higher cheekbones, um, hair kind of pushed back and, and kind of neatly. Um, kind of springs up against his shoulders. He folds one hand behind his back and looks at all of you. And what do I owe the pleasure? I'm... Do I owe all of you money? If so, I can pay it back. Not yet. Are you we here were... to kill me? No. Should we be? As many we reasons, were told too. That you might have some information about why this place isn't moving. Who told you that? Does it matter? The mayor told us. Lord Salandro, hmm? Well, I gave my price to him. 20,000 gold. I really don't like him. Of course I don't like him. What's the beef? What do you mean, of course? I did not of say that. Oh, good. Old Sir Andrew disallowed all bards to enter his town for four years after the Song of Silence. He was on the favor of the lords. Okay. It was only when we started to seem a bit more profitable that he decided to start letting us in as if nothing happened. Most bards ignore the town. They don't like coming to Sigmund, but it's got a bad name for it. Why should he deserve our coin, our entertainment? The bard colleges and guilds, we mostly make fun of this place. Insulted. Yeah, as we would here. with any... I am. Why? Because I care more for coin than I do about the other bad reputations, but I'm not stupid enough to help Lord Salandrel. Word got out that I did that. Playing here, at least I can say I'm being selfish. It's not well, good to fall out of the favor of the, the bards. 
So it is not that the cost is too high, it is that you refuse. Absolutely. Like, if he, if he gave you 20,000 gold, what would you do? You'd have to up your price? I did it for 20,000 gold. Losing the favor of other bards? Seeing myself neglected? I could give up my art for that. Would you? All right. It's a lot of money. You but you did tell him something. Otherwise, he wouldn't have steered us in your direction. I gave him a hint. Accidentally. Was it a real hint? It was. But it wasn't the full information. This rat, rat tail, rat tails. Rat tails is what they called themselves, yes. <clears throat> Grotesque. And so, they pitched themselves a company of heroes, but they're bandits. Is that as simple as it is? It might go a little bit more complex than that. But on the base of it, yes. I think they were trying to get in here to do a little bit of... Quick work. Uh, they cleared out two bandits themselves. Though I do believe those bandits were a part of their group. Hmm. How would they... Does everyone know that it's an orb that moves this town? No. How did they know? How did they know what it was? <laughs> Sorry, I... Uh, it was confusing for a moment. I thought... I must have imagined when you gave me the coin for the for the answers you're seeking. Did I? Mm. You didn't. I have a suggestion, if I may. Oh, I'm open. The mayor has told us that we may make demands were we to fix this situation. Perhaps in those demands could be something of benefit to Bards. Hmm. All a persuasion check. Let's go, cool, baby. <laughs> Come on. 26. Ooh. Ooh. Nice. Hey. Yeah. God Good damn. Team. Surely We're you carrying the favor of all the <laughs> other bards would go a long way. Clever. That's true. He's offered us a discount for life. Perhaps we could convince him to extend that to bards. A discount to all bard colleges and a guild. In exchange, and you would take full credit in exchange for giving us the information we need. And an apology for not standing with us during the summer I silence. I think that's fair. I like that. What is the song of silence above board? Can you remind me? Uh, you don't they know. Ask yet. You to, oh, we no, don't know. Be a check. Okay. None of us would know. Just uh, inherently. Some people might be able we to can... roll a check. Uh, okay. Can we roll checks? I wouldn't yeah. know. But... Uh, uh, I would say uh, not Carlisle or V because of where you two are from, um, but anyone else can roll a history check if they like. All right. 22. Woo. I get 22. a 25, Ooh. but plus five, I think, because it's oh my historical God. lore. Oh, damn. Oh, my God. <laughs> A 30 at this level? That's insane. Uh, <laughs> She's up glasses. Do you, wait, do you get it because of what you had in the plot? Is that Does, just magical lore? Plus five to history and arcana checks to recall information on historical and magical lore. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely a historical event. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, you both at, I'm mean, actually with Desmond's 15, you'd also have heard of it. You probably don't know the full <gasps> details of it. Um, but it's a, it's a widely spoken about event because it involved bards, so it's kind of easy to get around. Um, but with your 30, you definitely know the full details. Um, in the year 474, so only uh, 25 years ago, Lord Ellis Arkham um, was a cruel lord of Tirith Hale. Cruelest to the entertainers of the land, he had a, an issue with bards himself. The rumor had it was that his late wife was uh, having affairs with them as they came into town. Um, so he was known for kind of having this disdain towards any entertainers. He, he, he treated them with, uh, with ill manner. Tirith Hall was located in Orwethus. Was. One of the greatest uh, uh, bards in, in the kind of land, uh, a lady known as Lady Voice is kind of her stage name. She went to Lord Ellis Arkham's hall. She played in his hall. 
Why she went is unknown. But despite that, she was known for a kind heart. She played during a festival. One of the kind of many festivals that these places would have, as Weathers has many. She played from the morning into the evening until her voice started to hurt. And it continued playing all night because he would not stop her. He forced her to keep playing and playing until she pleaded. Her voice gave way, demanding that he get his coins worth. And when she finally stopped playing, in a drunken fit, he killed her. Bards, collectively, were outraged. They went to his lands. They learned every bit of his secrets. And over a few days, hundreds of bards had traveled across all weathers, learning every bit of information they could against him. They turned his house staff against him. All the cruelties that he had done through the years. Funded so many lords, conspiracies, and hatred towards him. That in one night, his entire house rose up to kill him. It's known as the Song of Silence, because by the morning all the bards had left their respective taverns across the land of all weathers. No more questions about Tirith Hall. Oh, Tirith, H Tirith Hale, sorry. And not a single song has sang the songs that they sang that night. Since then, people have known that the true power of High Loma in the people is told through bards. They can turn a nation against you. Probably the most of the information you'll get out of it. In Rasa relays, <clears throat> but in a school teacher way of like, well, this is fascinating. <laughs> Four seventy four. <laughs> he um, he kind of like waits until you're done talking about him. And the bastard here disallowed us from entry. Most of the lords of the lands understood the message that was sent that night. Don't kill your entertainer. Don't insult your entertainer. Pay them well and bid them good night. Salandro saw it as an offense. Sigumbrat was young at the time. So, he disallowed all of our entry. And the guild took a pretty nasty notion to that. Though not enough of one to sing a song of death to him, but enough of one to spread not to do commerce with the town. It probably cost them thousands of gold over the years. Though that is a bitter old memory. It has been two decades since then. So, you work in that deal? I think that's acceptable. I'm the one who brings Sigumbrad back to their terms. I get the bitter, stubborn Salandril to apologize to Bards. I'm a hero to my people. Maybe I'll even write a song about it. Except mm -hmm. why? I dare did say you... no working will be needed. He's not really in a negotiating position. Good. Sorry, sorry, V. What did you say? Mm, I was going to ask. I am confused. Why did the bards not band up and steal the orb themselves? Surely that is a good way to get back at Salandro. We're not common thieves. We're not cutthroats or any of the like. Most bards sing songs so that they can spend the night in a inn next to a lover with heavy amounts of ale. We do it for the love of the craft. We didn't seek to punish the town per se. More so just blacklisted from our own plays. We didn't want to bring money to it. We weren't looking to steal from it. They only lost gold because bards bring more commerce. And occasionally we might, you know, spin a tale of mistruth about the town. We're not thieves. I have nothing against Salandro. He's a stubborn old bastard. That's all. all so, right. what are we going to do with an orb like that? Sell it, likely, but... Risky, that. 
All right. Your terms are amicable. The answers you seek... He kind of hesitates for a moment and then lets down his guard. The group of stolid were known as the Unknighted Few. There's a few of them. There's uh, five of them in total. They run a bandit group. They're a series of... Some of them are outdoors of the, their own kind. Uh, it was founded by a couple of squires. I'm afraid I don't know their names. However, I do know that there was a band of five of them that ran it. It's a larger bandit company. It treats itself more like a, a small military. Um, they could have anywhere upwards of 50 people that work under their, their group. Hmm? They're the same as the Rat Tails. It's the That's same group. They just the same. call themselves something else. They okay. call themselves the Rat Tails and come into town. They're looking to see if they could get an easy score here. I recognized one of them uh, only through looks. Uh, a tiefling. Red of skin. Uh, horns which... Kind of one horn that goes down the side of his face, the other kind of curls around the top. That's how I recognize them. Unmistakable, really. See, the five of them came into town together. They did that bounty of the two. And I might they have... They did the other two bounties. They did one of them. I am not sure the other one. They did the... The bandit. They mm. did the, the bandit one, which was their own... I right believe it was people. probably part of their own people. They did it in a night, and the two, they brought back a lot of evidence of their clothing, a finger. When they went to check, the village was convinced that they were dealt with, the two thieves were run through. The bodies were found burned, though. Hard to really identify a burned body. Do you know what the reward was for that bounty? Cheap, uh, less than 100 gold, I believe. Less than 100 gold. They did it to win favor in the town. So they might walk a bit unnoticed. But one night I met with his ale, the tiefling. He played off feigning that I didn't know who he was. And uh, I might have let slip that he's asking questions. How does the magic work here? At first they were trying to hit up the store, the spell... Oh, the spell counter. That's the one. They were going to try and hit that place, but that place is uh, <laughs> pretty well defended. So they were asking about other magic mm. in the town. I said, well, all the other magic is probably owned by Slandro. And that stubborn old bastard keeps it mostly in his room. The next morning, they were golden. No one was asking about them. The Svarts were mostly guarding the tower. Asking questions around the town if they'd seen anything about anyone around the tower the night before. And then I pieced it together recently. With the bounty in check, I asked and inquired about it. Salandra so was open and honest with me. Made some threats, but obviously was not willing to push them through. Likely because he knows what would happen if he did. But here's the killer information I have. The best, the crux of it. Gives you a bit of direction. <laughs> See, when the five left, rumor has it, one of them left their group. Isael was seen fleeing in the direction of the House of Silhouettes. I believe really? he's hiding away from them. Find him, find the unknighted few, find the orb. Mm. Mm. That's not going to be easy. So you accidentally let slip information to Salandro, and you accidentally let slip information to this tea flame. Do you have a habit of doing this? Oh, yes. I'm very clumsy. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Can I insight check him? Yeah. <laughs> I was going to ask, does my, um, 
I don't think it does, but just out of curiosity, does my courtier uh, charisma insight work on this guy? Uh, can you read out the wording of it? Your knowledge of how bureaucracies function in High Loma gives you the ability to carefully tread social dynamics of noble courts. Ooh. When interacting with members of such institutions, you can use charisma instead of wisdom for insight checks to decipher their motives. Um, I would say because Silas is particularly a, uh, a politician among his kind of bardic people, that yes, you can use it against him. It probably wouldn't work against most bards, but Silas in particular is is kind of courtly. I rolled uh, a six, so just forget it. <laughs> <laughs> just forget his face. it. He's, he's kind of this guy is clumsy. <laughs> so I roll. Very. I just roll straight charisma and then add two. Or yeah, do you have? Proficiency and insight, because then yeah, you roll yes. your charisma and then just add two. Okay. Come on, baby. So twenty-four. <laughs> Damn. That's a save. Just kidding. Hold on. Uh, it'd be the Let same roll though, right? Oh no, that's it, it, so it'd be twenty-two because the, the charisma save is five plus two anyway. So we'll just take that. That's fine. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, you can tell that he's clearly. It was clearly kind of intentional. Uh, he, 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 uh, by the expression, it doesn't seem like he was. It was like a master plan, but he definitely let the information slip. You know? he, this guy knows it, what he's doing. Yeah. It, it does. It he does. He just seem like he just enjoys the drama. Likes a little bit of chaos. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You can see yeah. that it's a case of like. <laughs> he likes the tea. Being extra <laughs> um, uh, combative uh, against people that he doesn't. Stoking like. fires. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mr. Silas, have you been in Sigenbrot long? No. No. A short time. Since maybe a few days before it got stolen. Right. And how long ago was that? Solandra wasn't clear. He said two or three weeks. You'd think he'd know down to the moment, but... It was, it was I mean, it was two weeks ago, two, and a, two weeks and a few days. So... All right. Talking... Sure. 18 days ago. Hmm. Okay. All right. Well, that's helpful. That gets us started. Good. And remember to tell him, apology and discount for bards. Sure. I want it to look like it's... Uh, Are you... He's turned a new leaf, you know? Are you, um... Are you performing anywhere in town at Oh, all? no. No, no, no. Mm hmm no. It's a shame. My friend Desmond here says you have a wonderful song about macaroni in a hat. I'd love to hear it. He's going to look to Desmond. You've heard of me. Of uh, course. <laughs> oh my god. Look, Sam. How did that go again? I love it. Two bullshitters just like, oh my god. I love that song. It's my favorite. Holy it's shit. about my That's kid. Song. Everyone always asks for it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, you know, all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you might have heard of it. Uh, da, 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 stuck a feather in his cap and called it macaroni. You know? Sounds like it could be one of mine. I've already said It was many. a while ago, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Understandable. <laughs> Whereabouts was I? Uh. Uh. Let me see, let me see. It was so long ago. Uh, somewhere somewhere in Horizon's Rest, maybe? Uh, mm. That makes sense. You know? Mm. I mean, I've never been personally, but uh, <laughs> I'm sure someone was performing my works there. It could have been like, you know, how some celebrities have impersonators. Oh, like when you see someone, you know, and they look like, you're like, oh, it looks just like my friend. Yeah, it's kind of an act, you know, you pretend to be a celebrity, it's sort of a, a goof. Sure, I'm flattered really that someone would add lyrics to my songs, but... <laughs> Good to meet a fan. <sighs> well, well uh, Good luck trying fantastic. to get that one out of the House of Silhouettes, but... If you do, be cautious of the United Few, they're not a small group and they don't do... Usually small jobs, either. Are they... 
affiliated, like, affiliated with anyone? It's just them on their own? They, they are the affiliated ones. They are, this is the, they are, right. the five that were a part of them are a part of the non-knighted few. I don't know who, but I recognize Azale. They, they're the ones plaguing the strife lands in the kind of northern borders and northwest of it. They're not terribly dangerous, but they don't usually pick up. Well, I was going to say a small job like Sigmund Blood, but the city is, or the town is, sorry, is quite uh, quite magical. There's much gold to be had here, but they stick to raiding ruins or hitting larger merchant trails. Sunshade mm-hmm. would probably pay you well for all of them, dead and gone, but that's quite a few miles from here. Right. Mm. Do you have any theories on what they would use this orb for? Now, as you say theories, I have no idea. But if I had to guess, sell it back to the town, though they haven't, as far as I know, put any ransom in, maybe they need it for something else. I don't know. I don't really know what it does. All I knew is that he had something up there and some other things up there. I only really learned it was an orb after it was stolen. If it transports you around the place, a moving bandit group that can teleport across the entirety of Hyoloma, that's a pretty strong group. Mm. Yes. All right. Anything okay. else? All thank right. you for your time. Thank you for your information. Of course, of course. And if you do hear Silas the Blood, Blood Bard playing anywhere, <laughs> this is why I don't sing. Come see me. I'll give you front row seats. If you survive this. Desmond. Thanks for the vote of confidence. <laughs> <laughs> and he kind of goes back into his room and just sits down at the end of the bed. You can see there's a little bit of a pressure weight off of him um and you see his hand that comes behind his back is like a knife and he puts it to the side uh mm. Alain, you guys to leave the room okay leave them peace out silas mm. okay is there anything else you'd like to Excuse do me. well do uh, we go back to the mayor right now or do we sleep yeah right. <laughs> I guess we have to find the Noel kid. He's not a kid, mm-hmm. an old guy in the morning, right? Yeah. We're meeting about um, the tavern where Morgan is. Yeah. Do we, is there anything we need to ask the mayor now that we have this information? I don't, I don't think so yet. At least. I mean, if, I yeah, if we want to really like big dick this guy, we could be like, we're not going to talk to him yet. We'll just get the orb. And then when we show up, be like, we have the orb, but yeah, conditions have changed, conditions. bitch. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 precisely. So. Um, are we meeting back up with Vallis and Abigail to go back to the House of Silhouettes tonight, or are we staying in the town tonight? I thought they were staying the night. Oh, are they? Okay. I thought they were. Are they, Joe? I don't uh, they didn't say. Uh, Shit. <laughs> and yeah, you kind of left him. But uh, uh, Valis seemed to be like she was off. in a rush. Sister mm. Abigail was a bit more kind oh, of casual yeah. about it. So, Valis had the weird necklace. If you guys remember, they went to the they went to the tower, correct? Uh, Abigail Valis went to the tail went... uh, tower, sorry, and Valis went to the herbalist store at the time when he first came. Okay. In. All right. Okay. Um. I mean, I guess we can check to see if they would be at, I don't know, maybe they stopped to get something to eat before they walked two hours back. Yeah. <laughs> we, we can, can see look we see for them, them and at least. Because I, th- cause I, I think, right, we do want to go back there at some point because that girl mm-hmm. is there, but now also mm-hmm. we should go Zaya back there, and there look at all the identical mm-hmm. shadows and try to determine which one yeah. gonna... <laughs> is well, And not okay, ask yeah, anyone yeah. who they are. We're planning to meet the guy at the tavern here tomorrow morning. Okay. Yes. Maybe we should try to stay here. 
it was like a two hour walk, Joe? Yeah, two, uh, did you say? Yeah, about two hours from Did I make that up? <laughs> I don't know. No, it was, it was two hours from here. Uh, okay. I had like a brisk walk. Yeah, so do we want to so walk maybe... like two hours back? To the right, up, and in then the two hours back two hours again. Back, or do we want to just get rooms here? I feel like we should just stay and maybe try to find Valis and Abigail to let them know if we can. That might be trickier, but that's my vote. If we find them, we'll ask if they need accompaniment back. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. true. Because they were nervous that, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're nervous about the bandits who we now know more information mm -hmm. about. <laughs> so. And the gnolls, apparently. So. Oh, maybe we can ask them some stuff, actually. If they know anything else about the bandits. Mm. Mayhaps. All right. We go look for them, I guess. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, are you looking at anyone in particular? Mm. Or are you well, just going to ask they weren't to in the find? magic shop. They weren't the in the tower. The place is Fidel's. Two places. I think we peek in the tavern because it feels like people would hang out there just to see if like they got a bite to eat. We can like look in and see if we see their faces. Yeah, you can head over to um, the Bloaty Boulet. Um, you can see a uh, very traditional tavern inside, uh, except for kind of in terms of its its decor. More so, you've got your your barrels of beer and your um, kind of glasses and, and different uh, uh, brews up behind the, the main bar with a long wooden bar. Um, a few people kind of sat at the, the bar taking drinks and getting poured. The merchants, by the looks of them, some of them carrying their backpacks, I put them beside them. Um, you'd see uh, half orc who's running the, the tavern, uh, kind of broader fellow going around pouring their drinks for them. But inside the actual tavern itself, uh, it's only a tavern, not an inn, so there's no extra rooms. Uh, is a series of curtained off areas, um, almost like seating areas. And you can see most of them are open, a few of them are closed. Um, these kind of great big, uh, like soft blue uh, curtains. Uh, for you, Morgane, you can see that they have got. Uh, I'll get the color for you. Let me look up the spell. Um, they're almost emitting a a purple. Each of the curtains. Okay. Around the room. Um, you would see, kind of move around to different. The tables that are actually in the open area which is kind of these three greater tables in the section where a lot of people are invited to sit with each other and like converse and have like kind of great conversations. You can see uh, wearing kind of fineries, um, an ooze, an oozling kind of walking around, um, serving drinks. Um, you can see kind of cleans table by putting his kind of like ooze across the ground, the dirt going into his, into his body and then sizzles up inside. <laughs> um, you can see that there's like floating soap bars inside of him. And it pops one of them out and kind of like cleans the side of a uh, uh, one of the the like free tables with it, um, and also a few like mugs as well. Um, but you can see that kind of he's going around serving the tables. You don't see them primarily in here, but there are three currently like used curtained areas. Mm, okay. And if you were to look inside the ones which have open curtains, you can see they're like private rooms. There's almost like these small little tables with sure. seats that wrap around like little booths hmm. um i guess if the ooze looks up as we walk in i'd stop them otherwise i'd just go to the bar i think and talk to the barkeeper yeah yeah um uh the mm. ooze i mean he's, he's he's kind of wandering around and uh not trying to necessarily catch the attention of any customers. He's he's sure. just kind of waiting for them to kind of leave and then cleans up after their chairs and the desk. If he's busy, I'll just everything. go to the bar. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> you can go up to the bar. Um, All right. You can see the half orc just finishes serving up a couple, uh, puts a big kind of like tank it up on the side, turns and kind of like wipes his hands off, starts cleaning them on a little rag, dips his hands into like a barrel of water and like washes them. What can I do you for? Wow. Hello, dear. Um... We arrived in town with two of our friends. I'm just wondering if you saw them in here. Sure. Describes. There's not been many Sister visitors in today. We just got the sisters. Right oh, yeah, they're in the curtain over there. I'm going to point over to the left side. Oh. Ooh, right. Do we just knock? Do we? Uh, if, you, <laughs> if you're friends with them, uh, I can go and check in myself. I'll, I'll, have, uh, I'll have Boo do it. All right. That would be fantastic, dear. Please. Sure, Boo! See the ears go, like eyes go to the back of his head. Comes down and goes, yes. Uh, could you just go and double check in there? Uh, 
ask the sisters if they're expecting others. Oh my god. Okay. And he kind of like goes off towards the curtain, <laughs> opens it, slips in, um, and then a second later kind of comes out and you see his like little thumb up go and then walks back to kind of finish cleaning up a table. <laughs> oh my oh. god, he's cute. Yep, they're expecting you. Uh, do you need drinks, food, anything? Looks at group. We've got a decent variety here. Yes, I'm famished. Because we haven't eaten. Mm. Yeah, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll take whatever you recommend. Recommend all Everything. sorts. Do you like drink wise? Do you prefer a whiskey? Do you prefer ales or wine? Oh, whiskey sounds lovely, actually. Yep. Does the wine come in a glass? It does. If you wanted to, I'll have one. Yeah, get him your fanciest glass if you have it, please. What kind of wine sure. do you have, dear? It's red wine from the Gap. It's from, uh, and we've also got some fermented deep goat milk, which is mixed in with the wine. Oh, not that wine, right. but a different type. Right, I'll take the the Gap, please. Sure. He kind of pulls out this red, uh, and you see, he kind of pour into two glasses, two wine glasses, and puts them on the side. Um, you can see it's kind of decoration of like glasses and, and mugs and all sorts. It's all kind of different. Uh, some of them far posher, some of them a bit more kind of homely. Um, he puts your wine glass in front of you, Desmond, and in front of you, um, Indrasa. Uh, silver piece for each, please. Uh, and then uh, whiskey. Yeah, we've got some Windy Wood whiskey here. He goes down to a barrel and he opens the tap, puts it into a small glass as well. Um, pulls out a bit of ice, pops it in there. Um, Puts it on the side. You can see it's got this like reddish color to it. Um, oh, I know I'm reading the wrong one. It's 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 almost like a, a soft blue uh, at the bottom, um, and it has almost like this. Almost like if you're looking at very cold water, you've got like a mist coming out of the whiskey. And he puts it up on the side uh, for you, Carlisle. All right, uh, that's a silver as well. Yeah, here you go. If you want any food, just let me know. We've got some uh, mammoth hardy stew at the moment cooking up. We've got vegetables, you've got breads, whatever you need. Uh, also, All right. he looks on that. We do have one bottle of somber wine left if you want some of that. Do any of us know what that is? Um, Probably not. It's like a, it's like almost like a craft wine uh, that's kind of local. Or local to Sigenbrot. Like, they travel around gra right. gathering these different mm. ingredients. Um, you got a what? It's a somber wine. It would rather that? make you feel extremely happy or extremely sad. Oh, my God. Is it a 50-50 chance, or...? <laughs> I'm afraid I don't know. How does it work? It depends on the person, I think. I've seen... Oh, my God. ...equal amount of people who have been happy for it as, as sad. <laughs> Fucking Martin adjacent drinks. Oh, yeah, I don't get it. Seriously. Oh my but how God. much is the bottle, dude? Learned my fucking lesson, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I drank one that actually killed me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good times. How much is the, how much is the bottle of that? The entire bottle. That'll be two sure. gold. Two gold. All right. Just wondering. If you want a glass, it's a silver piece. It's not that rare, but. We get it every every time we pass back through a weather, so. All right. What about yourselves? Um, it's the Morgan attack. Food, drink. We've got some air, we've got some stout. Whiskey, wine. Water, if you want. Water for me, please. And goes over I to would the, also like water. Goes over to a barrel that's next to the kind of hand cleaning one and just dips a glass in there, uh, pops a bit of ice in it, and then uh, pops it up there as well and does the same. Two copper for the water. Bing. Ale and something hearty, please. Oh, good. Uh, man with hearty stew. Got a bowl of it. it uh, it's been uh, brewed pretty heavily. Quite a rich flavor. You like gritty Perfect. meats. Okay, we'll get a bowl for that brought out to you. And our ale, the Dragon's Bre Belch Ale. So, <laughs> uh, he kind of <laughs> leans down pours a mug filled with the ale. Roll a d6 for me. Oh my god. <laughs> Is this gonna kill you? It won't. It can't. You again, Bozo. We just talked about <laughs> it. <laughs> I got again, got you. Man. God damn it. You see a black ale fill up um, and uh, it kind of puts it on the side. Uh, it's kind of got this almost like steamy kind of effect on top of the ale. It's okay. good. 
And your one, uh, Carlo, when you, if you were to sip that, it has almost like a menthol-like taste to it. It's very dry. It's almost like you're drinking kind of this mm. almost like very, very cold uh, liquid going down. But it kind of, it's the opposite effect of like when a whiskey warms you. It kind of almost gives you like a chill, um, which might be quite comforting because the uh, Strathlands is, is fairly hot at the, the kind of this point of summer, the end of summer. Um, he kind of looks over towards you. Three copper for your ale, and then uh, just one silver for the stew. May I have a stew as well, please? We have a mm, me too. Me silver too, for the stew. Yeah. Silver for the stew. Pink. Right. Okay. okay. Mm. I'll bring out the stews over to your curtain area. Uh, and he walks back into the back room, leaving you guys. Next glass of wine. Okay. The red wine is standard red wine from the gap. All right. Desmond, would you like a glass? You are good at holding them. All right, got one, friend. Got one. Fantastic. <laughs> do you want this afterwards, Andrasa? I, I mean, I can't. Oh, of Just course. Tell me when you're yeah. done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I guess we go see yeah. sisters. Yeah. We go to um, the curtain. You can walk into the curtained area. Uh, the moment you kind of peel back the curtain, you can immediately hear them speaking. Uh, they're kind of deep in conversation. It's like cut off for a second. Uh, and if you'd enter into there, you see a series of seats around a kind of a larger table. It fit all of you a little bit cramped, um, kind of probably built for more like five guests. So having uh, all, all eight of you around is a little bit of a squeeze. Um, but a couple of you can sit on stools and the rest of you would sit on this kind of semicircle around the table. You can see they're, they're, they've each got a drink, um, Sister Abigail drinking wine, uh, and and Sister Vallis is drinking from uh, the same kind of ale that you got, but her one is green in color. It's halfway filled mm. down. And she <clears throat> kind of drinks it and goes, ah, good choice. So did you get everything you need? I believe so. We've also um, potentially taken on the task of helping this place get moving again. Oh. Well, it's a lot to take in in a day. It's just Abigail just kind of like sits back and smiles. Well, I imagine you're not going to be shooting back to the House of Silhouettes anytime soon. Well, that depends. Do you require assistance or protection on the way back? I'm not going back yet, and Sister Valis can handle herself. She nods her head. Is, hey. is Sister Valis still wearing the necklace? She is. Yeah. It looks now as if it's got like a almost like a, a sheen and coating around it. Um, almost like a it looks like almost like there's a plastic around it. Um, but this is mm. like soft coat, but green on the inside. It kind of moves around this gas. So, uh, Sister Valis will be leaving in probably the next fifteen minutes or so. Um, you're welcome to come back with us at any time you need. Uh, we'll keep good care over our guests. Oh, God. Do you come to town often? This would be my fifth time coming down here. I, I like to keep on the road. Uh, Sister Valis, the second time. Why? Just sort of hoping to get to lay of the land. You know, we... Tax said we were going to try to help out with getting the town moving again, but I've got some leads and I don't not really familiar with the area or anything like that. Oh. Did you know there's apparently a fish or something that's turning people to stone? Here? Yeah, there's also mm. a spider cave. Don't go that way, I think. It's oh, no, but the local the spiders. They're not too far away. Oh. <laughs> Well, they, they, the local spiders. They speak you know. about them. They're not. They're not aggressive. Oh, they are well, now. They've they become are now, aggressive. So don't go. Apparently, right. Well, <laughs> good thing we live on the other side. Uh, right. Well, away from that, uh, they they don't travel oh, far. Thank God. Or at least, in my knowledge, they don't. Besides the houses, we're usually undisturbed by such things. Creatures often stay away from it. We have enchants <clears> and <throat> other magics to keep them away. Does the house have everything one would need, or do people frequently leave and return? 
We try to provide all means uh, that anyone would require, so if someone doesn't wish to leave, they don't have to. But uh, sometimes our guests will slip out at different times. We also provide a service to sneak them out if they wish. You... So when we um, stayed, you said, you know, we don't ask anything of you except for, you know, contribute to the to the house. Yes. What if someone doesn't and they just leave? Like, are they... In, do you kick someone out if they're not helping, or do you... Like, what if someone just came there selfishly to just hide and took advantage? We would ask that they start giving back, and after a period of time, we would ask them to leave, yes. Hmm. In my time, we've only ever had to make two people leave. And trust well, me when I say good. this, we are capable of making someone leave if we need to. Though we wear cloth and walk around tending to the needs of those who wish merely to stay off the map. We are not pushovers by any means. Can I ask then if Tackle like look at the others for a second. If part of the information that we were given alludes to a potentially dangerous person being at the House of Silhouettes. Would you want to know that? We do not or wish no. to know anything about our guests, I'm afraid. Uh, I can speak about this later, though, uh, and I'll give you the full details, uh, as not to bore Sister of Valis. Of course. You Sister of Valis, you're all right going back alone? Why'd they be worried? Oh, the Nolds? Just... Uh, they're not going to disturb me on the road. You just seemed a bit nervous on the way here. I just wanted to make sure you were Well, on the road right here, I had that. a guest... And she kind of taps her chest um, and shows the kind of orb. Hey, yeah. but now he's protected, so I don't have to worry about him. But I didn't want to... I can look after myself. But to lose oh. a guest of the house would be uh, problematic. You stored a I... guest in the necklace. I. Is that common? Uh, well, for Spellborn, you know, their body does break apart. Some of them like to have different uh, means of living. Oh. I see. Oh. All right. Well, anyway, I'll get going a little quicker than uh, as the hour does go late. I might as well. She finishes off her drink, places on the table. Sister Abigail, the rest of you. She bows her head. You see her kind of chest roll up for her fingers. And she lets out a little burp and uh, like belches a little bit. And you see a little kind of green puff just come out. Almost like this poison <laughs> little cloud. Which, and then fades. And she goes, oh. And then pats Morgan on the shoulder and goes, enjoy yours. That one looks nasty in the mind. <laughs> and then walks out of the garden. <laughs> Say I'm cursed. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> None of Sam's characters will ever drink anything. <laughs> I mean, no, I don't ask for anything. <laughs> I can't see it. <laughs> you don't know. It's true. No. Yeah, it's true. It's true. True. Um, you'd feel the curtain come in, um, and uh, open up. Sorry, uh, after she's left, and carrying like now f like four arms sticking out of him, uh, carrying all different four bowls of soup, uh, placed in front of you. You see Boo kind of come in and goes, "Oh, do you need anything else?" I want to ask him like eight things just to make him talk. <laughs> uh, some bread, please. Oh, cool. Uh, I'll get you a whole platter of bread, but uh, do enjoy the, the food. It is a uh, mammoth. And then he steps back around and, and, and slips <laughs> off from the curtains close. <laughs> oh my god. Sister Abigail can leans forward when the curtains close after Valis is left. Dangerous how? Potentially one of the bandits. You have to be more specific than that. We have bandits coming through. I don't see much Are danger in a cutthroat. Are you familiar There's... with any bandit groups in the area? Not as local as out here, but uh, there, there's mention of some in the north. We there's don't a group ask. called the Unknighted Few. That they believe is the reason that this place is not moving. And part of our information that has not been confirmed, but it's believed that one of them 
is hiding at the House of Silhouettes. Mm. One of the, One of the main. potentially main five members of this group. We don't know if they're hiding from the other members or if they're there for another reason. Or if they have the orb with them. The orb? The way that this place gets around is apparently some sort of orb. About huh. as big as a fist. Have you seen anything like that? Not recently. I've seen various magical items come through our doors, but orbs are pretty common for them. So it's some mm. sort of teleportation orb. Do you believe he has it? We don't know. All right. Someone in that group does. All and right. Do you know, know they attained it by bypassing magical wards True. with little effort? Hmm. So I hope there's nothing valuable that the house. Fair point. That woman you brought back mm. is important. Keep an eye out of the house. It's dangerous currently. The other sisters are worried. If you are to get this orb, where is this town to travel to next? Horizons Rest, but they've offered us passage to a different place if we take it. You want us to take her with? When we leave? I will escort her with you. I'll leave the house. I'll serve. There is more to her than you know. But if we can get her no, out precious little of her to be honest but she's speaking plainly the reason that we're here and we I don't know it. why when she was in our house last she had a lot of magic magic i had not seen before she could alter things mm -hmm. change them The other sisters were worried about her, and when she left, the much them saw as a blessing. I was quite fond of her at the time. Do you know why she left? Did they make her leave? Did she choose to leave? She left and on her own accord one night. And she was one of the guests that would never leave the house at all for anything. How long? She left about a hundred years ago. 100 blessings ago. Yes. How long was she there before she left? Two blessings. All right. But during those two, I was I was younger. I was fond of her. I was friends with her. We shared a lot at the time. What I can tell you is that Wherever she stays, danger will come. She spoke of something. Like something was following her. Like she had a destiny. Like she was running from something. She kept speaking about our house being in danger while she was there in the last few weeks and then she disappeared. With her back, the other sisters wish her gone. They're talking about it the first night I was there, but they are panicked about it. We don't want to see the house fall into disarray. If I break my house's oaths, and I reveal this person to you, I'm going to need to get away from there myself. All I ask is you bring her as well. Wherever the town goes next, I'll go with it, and she'll she, so, she, so shall she. Can I do? I'm not great at them. Can I do an inside check just to like? Is her concern for this person genuine, or does it sound like she's just like, oh, that lady that came with you, like, to try to seize on our kind of goodwill? Yeah. Yeah, you can do an inside check. Also, also, I'm terrible at these. Oh, twenty. 
unnatural 20. Because they're rolling hot. Um, <laughs> Don't change She that, looked please. genuinely, she looks genuinely concerned um, about her. She seems to have a lot more knowledge about the lady than sure. she's on. Um, and, and there's more to it to her. But right now, she's kind of keeping her cards close to her chest. Hmm. Is there a way to assist us without breaking your oath? Let me think. I'm assuming people inside are anonymous to even you? No. We allow ourselves to, to speak with them. I wanted to confirm who it was first, but... I think I know who you mean. Perhaps you could simply notify us when they are leaving? It is also against our words. We're not allowed to talk about the comings and goings of anyone. Uh, even Sister Valis was saying too much by even mentioning she had a spellborn in her necklace. Even by mentioning the race of that creature, it's already a little bit pushy. But, mm. I, but quite frankly, breaking my word is worth keeping her safe. What is the punishment you would face for such an act? Gone of mine, not of body. If they get a hold of me, but they won't chase me far. Perhaps if I ran on foot, they'd send a couple of the sisters to hunt me down. But I imagine if you have this town moving, let them see. You could. And chase me across the entire time. It's a good head start, right? It would be worth All right. <clears throat> okay. So. A tiefling, yes? <laughs> I know the one. When I did can they arrive? For days before you not, not much prior mm. it depends how you want to do this I can show you which one it is when you're there I can attempt to convince them to come outside how do you want to play this I assume I that you want to protect this girl, but you'd also rather not have anything happen to your sisters or the house. It would be preferable. Perhaps it's best then to somehow convince him to leave. You also presumably need to wait for her to wake up as it will be easier to have her helpfully come along with us than carry her. Knowing what you know about her, would she go with us? If you are to protect her, yes. She doesn't trust easily. I don't want to... to be respectful of her as well, but... Um, she brought us here with her. So perhaps she trusts us a little bit already. She's traveled with you then, yes. I imagine so. Well. I lord him outside. You can deal with him. Yes. We have discussed staying here overnight and then helping with the Knoll issue before heading back to the house. Do you want to stay with us? The opposite. I should travel back to the house, keep my eye on her, and then when you appear, I will prepare things then. I have another request, if you could. If I'm to send him out to you, If he comes back, he will say, 
that would put you in a rushing position where we'd have to get away from this area quickly. All the sisters will... They will learn of... Our plans. But Take him, is what you're saying. Make sure he just doesn't come back. His life is not worth anything against hers. I can tell you that. I can't tell you much more, but I can tell you that. You, I would kill a hundred if it meant keeping her safe. A thousand. How long would it take you to be ready to leave? I assume you will need to do that without alerting any of your fellow sisters. I need not much. Right. But know when you do this, when we do enact this plan, we'll move quickly after that. So Then we'll have to wait until this place can move, at least. It might be a few days. You've been at the house for how long? I first came there. It was... Shortly after it was founded. Back in... The Lies Crown Rebellion. A man named... Vorgus, he, he started a whole rebellion and... The founder of the house... Needed somewhere to hide and created the House of Silhouettes. I came during a period of time known as the Night of Widows. I was rushing to hide away. The house was... First, kind of getting its bearings. Only two sisters there at the time. It's been over 200 years since I first... Stepped forth into it, but... It has been my home for a long time. I hardly remember even where I came from before that. The sisters there are good people. <laughs> but strict. She's worth... giving all of that up. Her path... If you should see to follow it, is worth a thousand times that and over. Hmm. But you should know the danger you're getting into. Are you sure we saw some of that? Can you understand the stakes? At least some of them. It is not my place to I'm she wakes up soon. It was not uncommon of her to fall asleep like this, and she could exert herself beyond her means. Sometimes her magic would be unquantifiable. She was capable of doing things that I have never seen a mage do. And I studied in the capital itself under some of the finer magi that came from Chastel in Misthaven. Russell wrinkles her nose at Chastel like <laughs> losers. I just want you to know that if you are taking this path, you're doing so out of your own will. Get us to wherever we go next, and you can leave it behind. But involve yourselves deeper, and you will have enemies. <clears throat> I suppose we'll have that conversation then. All right. <laughs> Would it look odd to Sister Valis if you go back tonight? Weren't you going to stay here? I'm just going to... I can travel back in the morning. 
And she wouldn't question it, regardless. So for Sister Valis is... <laughs> she can't see beyond her own nose. She's short-sighted when it comes to that. Uh, me being right. indecisive isn't exactly a new thing. Right. I'll lower a map when you need it. In the meanwhile, enjoy the wonders of Sigumba. Thank you. <laughs> she stands. I'll see you there when we need. Good. And she wanders out of the curtain, kind of like contemplating to herself, pulls her head back up, readies a mask, and heads out. My social battery is empty. Can we sleep? Talk about all of this in the morning. Yeah, it's probably a good idea. You must have been exhausted for five blessings then, if your social battery is worn out from just this. Being in different bodies helps. Mm, Being in the mind of someone who feels more comfortable helps. Well, I'll be setting out at sunrise to uh, help that man. All right. If anyone wishes to come, I will be there. I'll come yeah, I'll you. come along. <laughs> so, Morgan, before we go to sleep, may I ask you something? You may. You're blind, but you can see magical auras, correct? I. I suppose that's one way of putting it. Put a whole series of classes on this at the academy and tell you what every color is. Anyway, so how how sharply can you see things? I presume you can see, what was it, blue around me? Blue? When you have made your armor. Yeah, she would have it on. So it depends on the intensity of the spell. Interesting. So, uh, that person we were chasing in the bubble, if they aren't doing magic at the moment, or if they aren't, they don't have a spell on them or an item, would you know that they were standing right next to you? Do they have a sort of leg up on you? No. Right. I've trained my whole life to fight without needing sight. You're very good. Oh. Right. I just, you know, now we know what he looks like, but... I would hate for him to sneak up on you, is all I'm saying. I would mm. feel quite shit. Well, I'm very lucky that I have you then. Sunrise! <laughs> it's fine. Morgan, could you do a con save for me? Oh my god. I didn't drink oh it. My fucking I didn't god. drink it. I, didn't, oh. I literally didn't touch the thing. Okay. As soon, oh. as, as, soon as I was, she said it looks worse than mine, I didn't touch it. Mm. It's untouched. <laughs> it's untouched. It's, finally loses it's completely team. untouched. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, you just leave it there. Uh, no, we'll never know. Uh, you would have your breads and, and food uh, to, your breads delivered so you can finish off your food and your drinks. Um, You'd be able to go and buy a, a room at the inn. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the choices are for rooms um, because it does have a few different benefits depending what you wish. Are um, doo -doo -doo -doo, let me just find my inn. Uh, you could head back out towards the inn uh, up the side. You haven't, haven't gone there yet. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Where is my damn notes for the inn? Um. Sorry. There it is. Nine pillar in. Uh, so standard night is five silver per night. Uh, they'll have hay pillows, smaller rooms. Um, 
But if you stay there, I will have to make you do a 1d20 roll or something does happen on a 1. Um, you can spend 5 gold per night if you want luxury. Feathered pillows, larger rooms, windows over the area. If you wake up there, you restore all your hit dice when you sleep, but obviously you haven't spent any today. Uh, and 15 gold per night, exquisite. You have pillows that can be cooled or warmed with a word, a bath in the room, a larger bed. Uh, the sheets can be asked to hug you, so you can have sheets that actually wrap around you. Oh my God. Um, window <laughs> so can be set uh, to all any those site. bounties, you guys. I need sheets that hug I need me. this in real life. Your window can be set to any site you want. Um, and if you wake up in that room, uh, you can roll one of your hit dice and get that many temp HP for the next day. Oh my god. That's 15 gold per night. Money. Damn. So, uh, what rooms do you want to stay in? Uh, each room, uh, you could you could fit comfortably... Um, probably two to a room comfortably. Another person can stay in there. If you are staying in uh, the exquisite room, you would have you could have two in the bed. One on the ground would be luxury. I'll do it like by, by um, mm. kind of like levels of... If you have three people in the exquisite room, two of them can have the exquisite experience. One of them would have the luxury experience. If you stay in a luxury, two luxury, one standard. If you stay in the standard, two standard, one of you would be more likely to have the, the role. It got by one. All right. So, uh, who would like to stay where? Oh, man. We're poor, dude. We're poor right now. Hmm. <laughs> I'm fucking sleeping. You're just going to go for the standard? Yeah. Okay. What do we just get? You get what? Half your hit <laughs> dice? Well, if you didn't expend any, you just still have them all. Yeah. You get half back. Yeah. All right. The hit dice stuff only matters if you're doing that. But basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just depending mm -hmm. on what you want. Um, It's not death defying decisions, I'll tell you that. But there are, you know, that's <laughs> uh, uh, so if you just want to do standard room, it is only five silver a night uh, for a standard room. Yeah. Um, he wants to do standard. Are you get in separate rooms. <laughs> yeah, we'll, get, we'll, get, we'll, we'll just get a standard room and go to sleep. Okay, on your uh, your own okay. standard room. Okay. Um, yeah. Could you roll a d twenty for me? Oh my god. Uh, a ten. You have a soundless night. It's pretty comfortable. It's all kind of you know. It's it's uh, the pillows are kind of like. Uh, the kind of bed's like lying on hay and it's 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 uh, almost like a bedroll on hay and it's comfortable enough um, and, and stuffed with a, kind of like a softer material in, into the hay pillows. But it's not it's not uncomfortable. You have a you have a decent night's sleep. Okay, cool. Everyone else? Um, yeah, tack, tack would take whatever the cheapest room is. Okay. Can I, um, if I'm in a form that's a bit hardier, can I? Can I make this roll an advantage? <laughs> um, what do, do you mean, like a like a bigger form? Uh, I will say no, because of the nature. I of was the I was act, I was actually gonna say um, my kobold. Oh, then yes, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I thought you meant just Amazing. being bigger, but no, actually changing into a kobold would help. Oh my god, fantastic! Uh, I will say yeah. yeah, you can do an advantage. Um, I don't know if anybody would want to share a room with TAC, because it can be two people to a standard, right? Yes. Uh, I will say this. If you're going to roll, uh, if you have two people on a standard and you're rolling advantage, uh, they would have the the uh, lesser of the two rolls. Or the first of the oh, two rolls. Okay. Oh, because <laughs> okay. Because the event can still occur. You're just going to be but more resilient against person. it. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. So if anyone wants to room up with tech you can you don't have to <laughs> it's totally up to you uh i think andrasa is gonna look at one of the rooms with hay as bedding and then fully intending that her penury at this moment is a temporary situation we'll go ahead and spend the five gold upon okay. seeing hay beds and be like <laughs> absolutely not okay. Yep, you can get your own room. Actually, now I'm poor because she's a snob. <laughs> <laughs> Sucks, dude. So true to yeah. the character. I know. All right, well, if, if Tack's like, sleeping alone... Uh, that hurts my heart. <laughs> just because I'll keep this moving because it's, it's just bedtime roleplay. Uh, yeah. Tack, yeah, yeah, if you yeah. want to do the uh, d20 uh, advantage. Absolutely. 
Um, a 16 is Found the higher number. Knife. You're good. Beautiful. Fantastic. Um, Carl is going to do a normal room. He's a weird kobold. Carl Ka- is going to do a normal room. He's going to do a normal room. He sleeps on hay all the time. He's not that. Yeah. He doesn't see much issue with that. It's it's like a blanket over hay. So you're not directly on the yeah. hay. And there's like straw in the pillows. Okay. Yeah. Hit me up with a. That's a two. You're good. You're good. Oh, oh, no one. <laughs> uh, it's close. What about V? Uh, oh, Desmond. Is it evens you... and odds? Oh my God. I will tell you, Desmond. Yeah, I was going to ask. It's only on a one. It like... occurs. There's only okay. a five percent chance. Oh, um, um, since I don't need a bed, I can. I'm guessing V is going with Carlisle here. Uh, v is welcome to come with Carlisle if they want. Does that change our roles situation? No, it's okay. It's still You're basically rolling um, for the, the the existence in the room. If I'm missing one hit dice, will I still get it back from that that room? Uh, no? yeah, yeah. You still get half your hit dice back. You okay. Get half of them. Okay. Cool. 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 Yeah. Then I'll do that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The role's the same. Okay, and I was going to ask, since I don't need yeah. a bed, I can still, like, go in the room with them and just, like, yeah. prop yeah, myself yeah, yeah, on yeah, the shoulder yeah. on this the corner, like... arms crossed. And, and I'll tell you right now, oh, yeah. you wouldn't be affected by the role anyway. I also okay. don't need say. really a bed, because I trance. She just doesn't want to have a hay room. That's fine. Yeah, you <laughs> if can someone go wants and... to split... That's so funny, dude. Yeah, if someone <laughs> wanted to split a nicer room, she's pissed. Paid that more hay. money than anybody she's else. Not, yeah. so won't even funny. lay in the bed. <laughs> she's Amazing. like, yeah, she just doesn't really. So yeah, so if somebody else wants to sleep in a bed, they can. She's just gonna be like trancing in a chair. Uh, oh my god. No, you you all you all sleep soundlessly. Have a have a good night's rest. Um, and avoid bed bugs, uh, which could have occurred. Hey, oh, thank God. Oh, no, Amazing. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, no, yeah. no, no. But yeah, you'd um, wake up the next day um, and uh, be able to head back out into the town. But before we do that, let's go ahead and take a little five minute break. Yes, please. Uh, as we are a couple hours in already. I, yes, I gotta yes. pee. All right, we're back, you guys. <laughs> we'll see you in five. All right. Bye-bye. All right, Jet. You just. Make sure we push back any ad rolls. I didn't. I forgot to do it before the start of the stream. During the break, and we'll come up with a, a bit of a no hunt soon. I imagine is what they're going to do next. Oh, thank you, Manda, for the raid. Sorry, I have my chat closed when I'm DMing, so I don't ever see it. That's very sweet, buddy. I appreciate it. Uh, we had some subs as well, which was very sweet. Let me see where. Where did I get to from before? Jar UK, thanks so much for the 16 months. King of the Ice Swords, thank you so much for the 14 months. Flop along with the new sub. I pre- I'll give them a sub to Tisty. Thank you so much for that, buddy. Cleft with the resub for one month at tier three. You wonderful human. It's very sweet. Thanks so much for the 14 months, dude. Professor W fourth for the three months at tier one. That's very sweet. Thanks so much for helping me push towards that 70-30 split. Very kind. Zero and Cali for the prime for five months. Thank you, buddy. Anonymous gifted gave our community sub. Thank you. Metazo with a 41 months. God damn. And an Albie with a nine months. Thanks, Albie. Appreciate it, buddy. All right. I'm just going to take a minute, a minute break myself, chat. Give yourselves a drink and whatnot. Uh, oh, wait, let me push back the ads. Here you go. You won't miss anything, so don't worry. All right. See you in a few.
Okay, chat. Let me just let them know. Okay. All right, I'm muting in one minute. If that chat, we'll get going. Also, thank you for those uh, fan art pieces that have been coming in. We check out the fan art every two weeks. Every two weeks. Okay. Let me do this and bring us back up. Hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> what is happening? Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. Uh, okay. Um, I'll bring us back up into things. So. You would have rested up for the night, um, and uh, got your, your your good night's sleep. Um, you'd be able to uh, uh, all, all kind of rest well. Uh, in the morning, go downstairs. If there's any food you'd want to buy, you can just knock off like a few copper, three copper for, for a morning kind of breakfast. Um, the inn would serve kind of basics. Uh, they'd almost have... As this is kind of like a traveling inn um, and like is very specialized, you'd almost have like the equivalent of a mini bar, uh, but you'd have like these kind of self preserved like breads and it gets nicer per the room. Um, but it's almost, you can see there's almost like a, for, for you Morgan, you can see beneath them, there's uh, the kind of essence of divination magic uh, kind of seeping mm. off of it so that if you were to lift any of the food, it would almost like they'd charge you onto the bill. Um, mm. <laughs> like those shitty that's fridges funny. in a hotel. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. Eight fifty yeah. has been charged your room, no. right? <laughs> um, so no, if you've eaten any of the food, but otherwise, if you want to grab some food, just knock <laughs> off a few copper uh, for some of the bread. Um, I should really say a few gold, really, because it's uh, going to be exorbitant prices. But no, it's just a few copper. But uh, yeah, you can head back out into the into the street uh, as as dawn arrives. Um, where would you like to go? I was going to say really quick, uh, because of a mechanic I used last session, V looks really like super well rested, looks stronger. Um, and that is because she ate she bathed, <laughs> she bathed in blood. <laughs> she bathed in blood and so she gets oh. an additional hit dice upon Early resting. Yes. yes. V, you're glowing this morning. <laughs> yeah. Look at you. You're positively radiant. <laughs> okay. I would head to the tavern where I agreed to meet. Yeah, mm. outside waiting for you. Um, you can see uh, armored up, kind of ready, waiting at the door. Probably been here already for a while, kind of pacing back and forth. His, his weapon at his belt, kind of fully ready to go out. Um, hair a little bit kind of disheveled. Uh, eyes tired. You can see Danyuk. He sees you coming. Oh, sir. I did as you said. I've, I've, I've spoken. I heard it to the Shadowstone Tower. They don't help with this kind of thing. Uh, but I went over to the Wayward Souls. I've got 25 gold to my name. I can afford one of the mercenaries there to come with us. But I don't know which one to pick. And it should also be your decision as well, because they want they want a percentage of any gold we get. But the more arms, the better, right?
Uh, Morgan would turn back to the group. Do you think we need a mercenary? <laughs> Who's ludicrously priced and will take shares of anything? Um, how many do we believe we're going to be fighting? Anywhere up is upwards of 15. <laughs> Tack will look around. Well, considering that our doctor alone murdered, what, three of them, I think. <laughs> Probably well, fine. I, I'd appreciate it if we don't talk about me uh, killing, murdering, uh, in those exact words. All right, thank you. You just saved different lives, dear, that's all. You saved mm. ours instead of theirs. Never feel bad for a no. All they do is hunger and eat, tear apart people, and beasts. If we're ready to set out, then if you don't want to buy anyone, keep my coin and we'll... choice is entirely yours. What if there's treasure that I don't want to... I've offered it up to you. I don't want <clears> them <throat> to cut in any of your treasure. I'm not doing this for treasure. And it's, it's, uh, it's honestly up to you then, because I'm going to follow your lead. I don't know how to... I don't know how to perform an ambush. I'm just... I'm just a soldier. You seem... You seem stronger, better. Should I buy some? Based on what we've heard about the mercenaries, I feel like they won't be up to the task. All right. So let's go then. Let's go then. You put this coin away. Um, for those who can see him, you can roll an insight check if you like. Over Daniel. Yeah, sure. Sure. That is a twelve. This man's is pissing his pants. <laughs> his pants check? Uh, <laughs> it'll be a low DC, uh, uh, but Tack, you'd pick up on it with an 18 for sure. Um, he's definitely not slept a wink. He's going to go in with exhaustion. Oh, uh, okay. oh into this next buddy. Um, Let's explain adventuring to this poor kid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, yeah, he, he he's... <clears throat> Walks straight towards the, the front of the town, eager to get out of there. Um, reaches the elevator. Um, you can see, like, in the morning, Svart, who also really tired, not really expecting him to travel at this point, like, like, slower with it, and he's... Yeah? I'm sorry. Um, Morgane and I now do not have exhaustion, correct? Oh, yeah, 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 you're clear of exhaustion. Yeah, yeah, if you okay. slip, yeah. You're good. Um, it goes down based on uh, another thing, mechanic I should say for those rooms. One of exhaustion gone in a standard room, uh, uh, luxury room would have given two off, and then um, uh, exquisite would have taken off three. That was the exhaustion. Uh, nice. But yes, okay. uh, in standard you would have cleaned off. Um, you kind of get to the edge of town. The, the morning spot kind of grabs hold of the, the produce, <laughs> kind of like no, slowly no. dragging it, and you can see Daddy kind of like tapping his foot. Come on, come on. And then it should be able to travel onto it and uh, head down back onto the, the wilderness, back onto the road. Um, and begin kind of setting off in the direction of the north. Is there anything you want to do before leaving town or is that you heading straight there? Um, can I uh, channel the echo I want? It's, it's built in as you have it written. Mm -hmm. It says it, it takes 10 minutes. Can I do it while walking? Um, I would say so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd okay. be concentrating during the 10 minutes, uh, but it'd be okay for that, yeah. You're basically spending your, um, your body can do it that, right? Oh, you can do it yeah. once, I think. Yeah, you, I, I can do it once without yeah. having to use a bardic, once per long rest. I'll message you which one I'm channeling. Okay. Sounds good. Um. I would have, uh, cast mage drummer, but I feel like we already know that. I'm not going to say it every day. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to assume if there's any assumption-based ones, uh, any of your mechanics, say them now, and then we'll have them on record as like, a, oh, yeah, you did say. So, Mage Armor, anyone else do anything that you, you this morning, preparing anything, getting anything ready? Uh, no. Okay. Mm -mm. I, I would be casting built... uh, oh, False on. Life on myself. Okay. Yep. And I would have spent the two hours that I don't rest uh building another turret okay yeah 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 you build yourself a little turret um okay and then set up on the road mm 
what kind of pace are you going at? Uh, are you sticking to the road? Are you going through the woods? Uh, and what's the kind of marching order? I mean, probably... I feel like Danyuk's probably like, let's run! Yeah, <laughs> and we're yeah. gotta be like, uh, dude, you look tired! We should maybe be like his, a better yeah. pace, right? Like, yeah, his, his uh, <laughs> intention is to, to go fast. Uh, fast will give you disadvantage across all stealth checks. Normal pace... Um, is standard, and you get advantage if you go a slow pace. I feel like we'd probably try to convince him to go normal pace, but I don't know whether he would. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I mean, like he'd listen to Morgan. I feel like Morgane he doesn't have a like... choice but to go at our pace. Yeah, yeah, so right. So true. Yeah, uh, if if you, uh, I'll tell you this: like, if you are going at a normal pace, he's going to be like kind of doing that rushing thing at the front and kind of like almost trying to eagerly push oh, you along, like a toddler. He's like um, a dog. <laughs> yeah, kind of like a dog. <laughs> Uh, or your baby. <laughs> uh, Morgan would pull him to the side. Yeah, I was going to say, if you would like to talk to uh, him. Listen, um, these creatures, they have dark vision. That's why we didn't attack them last night. We would surely be dead. So it's, now, it's coming. Yes. If your friends died, they died last night. And if they didn't, well, rushing in recklessly isn't going to help us. Okay. Okay. How would you know they did? Well, either they ate them or they didn't. I'll follow your lead. I'm, I'm at your beck and call. Uh, whatever you think's best. I falls back into line. Immediately trusting your 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 judgment over it, uh, as kind of respecting the the status. Uh, you seem kind of slowing, reluctantly, but like understanding, um, falling in line. Cool. All right, yeah, we'll move at normal pace. Okay. And on the road or through the woods? Um, we'd probably, I imagine, retrace our steps till we veered off the road last time, mm -hmm. and then yeah, go from there. Okay. Then you would uh, make it back to where you were an hour down the road um get to the portion which you recognize where some of the brushes you can kind of push aside and you can see where you you exactly where you were when you uh, left the sisters on the road pass your way back through and you can see uh where you had left the corpses uh they've been moved they've, they're gone now um the rest of the horses have kind of like the corpses have been left there as well the carcasses have been left but the bodies of the gnolls have been moved um, he looks around nervously when you kind of get to that section and, uh, and kind of like looks over to the distance from where he knew the others were taken. We threw the woods that way. And I don't know. I don't know how many there will be, but there were plenty. Not all of them were as tough as some of the ones here, but How do we do this, sir? Looks at Morgane. You're mm -hmm. muted, Morgane. <laughs> well? Which way did the bodies go? He points where that kind of, it's been dragged. You can see the, the uh, not hidden uh, kind of footprints in some of the mud. Um, of many different kind of knoll treads that head like east-ish of you, northeast-ish of you. And we follow the tracks. Okay. Um, as we walk, I would like to cast aid. Okay. Who you talking Give to? temp HP to Morgane, V, and Desmond again. Max HP. It's, uh, Thank you. It's a plus five. Plus five. Oh, yes, it is max HP. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. Yes, increase by five. <clears throat> yeah, huge. Uh, for the next eight hours. Nice. Um, nice. Are you guys stealthing? Are you going normal pace? Are you rushing at this point? Or are you... And what's your marching order? Is everyone, is everyone sticking together? That kind of thing. It's my secret. I'm always stealthing. 
<laughs> I feel like we would want to slow down a little bit, right? Because we're getting yeah. close, mm-hmm. and if there's 15 of them, like, we're not... Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> okay, yeah, we'll be going cautious stealthing. Okay. Um, then can I get stealth checks from everyone? He also went out. Yarp. Real Ooh. nice. 19. 18. Six, uh, a 16 five. with a minus one. <laughs> Let's go. I got a <laughs> five. <laughs> no! Drop it! Uh, <laughs> so high. Also remember, just... if you are wearing, uh, uh, I think, Sam, you'd have to do your one again, because if you're wearing heavy armor. Actually, wait. Uh, what armor are you wearing? Not oh, heavy armor. I don't think it's disadvantage, but let me check. I, I it would be a disadvantage, yeah. I okay, yeah. so. Yeah. Uh, um, are you wearing a chain shirt? Yeah, it's disadvantage, yeah. Mm-hmm. Go again. Yeah, all heavy armor is disadvantage, yeah. I thought if we were sneaking, we get advantage on stealth. Or no? Oh, you're saying because you're, you're going at a slow pace now? Then yes. Then you yeah, would all have advantage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Oh. Then I got a 20. Oh. Okay. Oh. Then I got a 10. This is basically you're going at half your speed stealthing. 19. Um, I'm still an 18. Okay. Nice. Uh, so 10's the last. Okay. Oh, wait. Actually, oh, I have to God. do this one as well. Uh, mind. Uh, I mean, you have advantage. So I don't sneak. Uh, passing through the tree line, heading into the woods, pushing through the brushes, you can see where there's kind of almost been this unnatural path being formed. It's not long. 20 minutes or so before you get to... What lies ahead is an opening. You hear the gnolls before you see them. You can hear this chanting of like, almost like a rabble of cackles of high pitched laughter. <laughs> and then all kind of like coalescing together. But then you can also hear them go, Hast, 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 Hast. And it starts echoing, chanting. As you're coming up through the tree line, you can see the tr- trees start to get more sparse. And up ahead of you, You know the gnolls are gathering. You can see 150 feet away where the hills start to kind of climb up. And there's a series of these kind of like like large hills on top of each other. Almost cliff face that goes up. Um, uh, The actual kind of hill itself, probably only 100 feet high at the top of its peak. But loads of little levels going down. Through the trees, you can see figures are around. And there sounds like there's a lot of voices. Can I get perception checks from everyone? Twenty-one. And that one. <laughs> um, is this with visual or hearing? You can choose. Oh, I'll do hearing. Okay. And get advantage because of my uh, race trait. Sounds good. It's okay. Uh, ooh, that didn't do third. anything for me. Uh, Eleven. Eleven's not really going to show you much. You guys are in like the trees line still, so you're only seeing the figures. So it's basically trying to find like a spot to kind of get through and see what kind of situation. I got an 18 you're going for on. hearing. 18 for hearing. Um, amidst the shouts, you would hear a voice. They're all speaking in a different language. Um, I assume that no one speaks in null. Uh, oh come on! It's its own language. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You can hear them all kind of chanting, but amidst Actually, it, you can hear one person say, Get on with it! You hear that kind of echo through. Only you, Morgan. The rest of you just hearing the chanting. And you hear one particular voice that goes, Hatsa! Hatsa! And the chanting of all of them. You're that probably... cut out a ton. I don't know if Wait, that Noel was saying anything in particular. I think I think it's yeah. I think I'm getting uh, noise gated. Uh, it, uh, it gets it, you hear this kind of like, <laughs> it's like almost this kind of chanting um, from one mm. particular voice. Uh, I think Discord's probably just noise getting me after edit that. Um, Discord you... doesn't recognize Noel. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's, 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 it's realistically what you'd heard uh, with <laughs> Nat one. Um, if you get closer, you're going to be within like 40 feet of the area. Mm-hmm. Risk sight. As it approach, Morgan, uh, Morgan would kind of hold a hand up. Get with a 21. 
Was there anything? Ooh. Oh, sorry, I didn't see your 21. Ooh, fancy yes. pants. Yeah, you would have been able to, uh, uh, good, good, uh, good to know. Uh, you'd have been able to see as um, in the fields ahead of you, you can see a series of trees uh, are cut down in front of these hills. You can only really see the hills at the tops of them. Um, but you, Carlisle, managed to find like a little branch, kind of slip over and get a good glance. You would see over a dozen knolls gathered around a series of stones with a great big kind of stone in the center. There's blood all across it and on the ground around staining the floor. The floor around this area looks charred and kind of almost uh, um, just kind of burnt away. The grass is kind of uh, charred away. On the stone itself is someone tied up, lying back um, with a series of hyenas who are like kind of like pulled back by knolls. Uh, and they're preparing a brew. And you'd no. see as they kind of pour it down onto him and into his mouth. It kind of pours over it. Moments after you shout out, he's trying to stop himself from drinking. Now, 21 would also show you up on the hills. You can see they've almost kind of got all these series of caves. Um, at least three cave openings, um, if not four, uh, on these hills as they kind of go up into their different uh, leveled sections. There seems to be a, a taller knoll. Not much taller, but like a good maybe like six, six and a half feet. These things are mostly kind of hunched down and closer to five. Standing on the hill with a staff, kind of purple fur, deep kind of purple, almost blackish fur, kind of calling over the others. It's jawline bigger and broader, chanting as the others are kind of feeding this, this liquid to the person in the center. And you would see as his body starts to ripple and change, you see horns pull out of the skin and burst and start kind of cracking as they go out, as bones are kind of forming. You see his jaw starts turning into bones, starts screaming in pain. The person that's tied down, the other, all of the hyenas just laughing. <laughs> Up ahead? No. Nope. All the gnolls gather, doing their ritual. Well, uh, I'd say they're probably pretty distracted right now if we're planning on an ambush. How far oh, we might want to do it quick. You are currently, uh, I would say, from the closest knolls, from the actual ritual table, probably like 100 feet. Um, if you get within 60 feet, uh, or, or about 70-ish feet, I would say you're in noticeable levels at that point. Okay. Um, I'd need to be a bit closer to try to disrupt whatever's happening in the center that I can't really see that well. But do we want to just, do, I don't know, start shooting at the ones around the perimeter? What? I don't really do a lot of attacking. Is there like, Joe, is there any like perimeter nose near us? Uh, I think the closest <laughs> one. Before we get to the center. The closest one's probably about 80 feet away. Uh, okay. They're all in kind of like arranging around the ritual table uh, from what Carlisle can see, other than the ones that are kind of up on the top of the levels, um, uh, looking down at everything. <clears throat> they're probably a good like 20 feet up. So they don't really necessarily have sentries or like guards. It's all just gnolls gather around chanting. Okay. Well, in fact, what I'll do for you is if you have rolled a successful perception check, I'll bring you to the map. Uh, you're going to be in the bottom left corner going in. But this oh, is Lord. the That's map. A lot of okay. <laughs> oh, my a lot Lord. Of mm -hmm. So you can see that this <sighs> is the kind of one in the center. I feel like 22 is not 15. <laughs> <laughs> It's close. We can all put ourselves in hindsight. On the <clears throat> yeah. This kid's bad. Yeah, they're all going to be armorless gnolls, though, when they try. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's cool. Yeah, that's yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> Easy. If you want to think... put yourself down there, yeah. I think the average roll for sleep as well. We could potentially put a bunch of them to sleep at some point if we need Ooh. that. You'll see a so lot of these gnolls are um, 
you correctly say they have uh, some of them have a lot less armor than the, the other guard ones you saw. Um, however, uh, they look a little bit more kind of like cold over and vicious. They're like kind of like built for speed and they're kind of chanting across them. They're holding back three hyenas. Uh, <laughs> you can see the hyenas getting closer as this person's body transforms on the table right in the center. Um, I guess that me because I only rolled a 14, but does Carlisle see any of any prisoners besides this person on the table? I'll put Daniel on the thing. Uh, no. Right. Does this look like a cave going inwards more there? One moment. Uh, I'll just, okay, get Daniel's. Daniel. Oh yeah, thank God we got Daniel. We're not totally <laughs> outnumbered. Daniel with a level of exhaustion. Yeah, yep, man. it's he's gonna do. Really it's because well. he cares what, what level so is much. He? One. Uh, I, will, yeah. I mean, I, if you guys, you can also control Daniel if you prefer. Otherwise, I can do it. I don't mind. But he is. Um, he's. I think you should control okay. Daniel. <laughs> He's an okay well, board, we should have taken the mercenary and then just made okay. sure he died so that we didn't have to split loot. <laughs> yeah, that's Whoa. True. It's an option. Yikes, that's dude. very fair. That's my gamer brain kicking. <laughs> my gamer brain says we should have let him die. Um. Then Drassa would have been okay with that. <laughs> Morgan would not have. <laughs> oh no, he died. So, I love <laughs> watching Sam and Tomato try to play like really nice people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, so yeah. Good. it's really fun it's for me. All of this would have been so much easier. I as really as enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. D just walked in and punched the first guy. Yeah, D and D is easy mode when you play like uh, a ruthless character for sure. But as soon as you have to be the nice guy, it's tougher. <clears throat> so V enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at the moment, we're in like a pause moment <clears throat> as you guys are like taking in the information. Right. But you can see as his body is transforming, you see as he kind of like claws start to appear on his hand, his kind of eyes roll back and go black. His chin's kind of like almost like the, the bone is kind of like doubled in size, causing his chin to kind of spread out. His neck's kind of thickened, his body's widened with muscle. <laughs> you hear him kind of screaming, ah! as his body just kind of broadens. Right. What do you want to do, past? I'm too far away to do much at this mm -hmm. moment. Same. Wow. Well, yeah. It, um, I think, think. Sorry. Sorry. First of all, Joe, uh, to loop back around what I asked before, is this spot I'm pinging, is that, does that go deeper in? Is that like a cave? Oh, sorry, there. I didn't see the spot. Uh, over up north of you? Oh, wait, no. no I'm, I'm looking at Sam's thing. Uh, yes, that is a cave, and there's a cave up here as well. Uh, there's another okay. cave over there, and another cave over there. There's a ton. Okay, so more. Um, <laughs> yes. Potentially. Potentially. I'm going to put the turn order on, and then we'll do it turn by turn, because some things are going to start to happen. So, uh, uh, for this, I'm just going to put Noel as a general uh, uh, turn. Because they're kind of you moving as a unison. Um, pre combat. Oh, I didn't mean to roll a zero a thing. I'm just going to roll a straight roll for them. You guys. My initiative is so sick. Uh, <laughs> uh, they've got a four. They're going to go on turn four. Bloody hell. Yeah, right, G, I'll tell you what. Uh, to five. They will be on. Sorry, I just saw that. Initiative count 20. <laughs> But we'll skip their first turn because, assumingly, that'll be the thing you just saw happen. They'll start acting on t a round two. All right. Um, and then let me put Daniel on there as well. Okay. And... Okay. Tack, what do you want to do? <clears throat> um, I think Tack would be talking with the group like is there benefit in splitting them up should we split up or we haven't seen any of them do any sort of magic if they're going to just come at us head on it might be best to stay together I don't I don't really know I don't like the idea of the ones up at the top why are they up there what are they doing they might Changing be and bossing hey, them around 
Some of them at least might be easy to trick, take in another direction, but I don't know how long that would last. I can get a good few of them around that table if I can get close enough in a bit of a gravity smash inversion. I can move along the tree line, distract in the opposite direction. It might help. Just going to cut off the conversation. <laughs> well, that's the most conversation you're going to be able to get out of this moment. Otherwise, I'm going to have to move on that's to fine. the altar. Yep. <laughs> Um, so it's actually my turn, right? So I could move. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's your turn. Imagine you were saying that during this kind of moment of like, you know, you could have slipped in and then rushed off during your um, moment. Um, okay. I've had 10, 15, 20, 25, and I'll hide here. Okay. Go ahead and do your stealth Just check. Trying to get a better gauge. 14. Okay. 14. Um... Let me just double check something quickly. I want to just do, do, do. I just want to see if the hide rules changed. Uh, because we we put in, yeah. So when you take the hide action in uh, our current rule set, uh, you must succeed on a DC 15 dexterity stealth check while you're heavily obscured or behind three quarters of total cover. Um, right now, because they don't know you're there, it'll be basically just based on their passive perception. Yes. Okay. Um, so you're not well hidden right now. Okay, it's my turn. Desmond, what are you doing during your turn? Uh, I'm staying right by Tack because... Actually, no, uh, I don't think he would move at all. Okay. Because he is afraid of making noise. He also, turns out, uh, some medium armor does have disadvantage on stealth, and he's wearing just the type. Okay. Um... You, I'll say, by the way, Indrasa and, in. and Tack, you've used up your conversation, but if anyone has anything else they want to talk about, you can mm -hmm. hear in it. Like, whilst okay. they were talking about that, mm -hmm. you can that. Yeah. Um, but Danyik's going to draw his blade, and uh, his intention is to go in. So he oh my God. draws his blade. <laughs> That's so devastating right there. They've done something to him. We can free him right now. Is anyone trying to stop him? Uh, Me and Tech can't. <laughs> well, I was going to look to Morgane because they're the one that's... Yeah, Morgane is right next to, to him. Morgane would Andy's draw her blade too and then say, stay behind me. Oh, fuck. Okay. He'll hold his... Uh, he'll Yeah, he'll hold his action. Um, or he basically, he'll take the dis uh, the uh, dodge action this turn, and then next round he'll follow you. Actually, no. Persu uh, persuasion check. I'll give you a free persuasion check. <laughs> now that he's staring okay. at his, his knight being changed. 13. <clears throat> I'm going to see. I'm going to roll a, a check for him to see if it's against his position. I'm going to say wisdom check. Yep, it works. He You can see like he falters. He knows he has no chance. This kind of fear overwhelming against his uh, uh guys i delayed us one turn before that guy does really dumb shit <laughs> he is just gonna immediately mm -hmm. v. yeah <laughs> um v would glance to carlisle and she looks really conflicted i what? think oh yeah sorry what? go on no you're fine what gives us the right to intrude upon this well, because, uh, to my knowledge, those gnolls didn't exactly ask before they start turning that guy into whatever they're turning him into. Mm. Understood. Um, and she will try to go on forward, I guess, also trying to stay stealthy. Can she hide as well? Like, could I take a yeah. hide action? Yeah. Okay. You successfully Maybe hide if you're at DC well. 15, is the current rule set for Okay. It. So you, you have to be assist. in cover though when you do it. Okay. Is does this count? Uh, like this yeah, because if you have their vision right now, their it's vision. smaller than tech. Yeah, their, their vision <laughs> doesn't. That's true. Yeah. true. <laughs> yep, that would okay. work. And then I gotta do a stealth roll. <laughs> yes, oh please. my god, my cat. Okay. <laughs> uh, I believe in you. Thank you. 
Door now. Oh, door shit! <laughs> you blend up against it and you find yourself in this like perfect shadow that hides you behind the tree. The tree is the perfect width of the greatsword. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's a, the, you're, the, like a where you're holding the greatsword, there's a branch that is the exact same like like shape going off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Perfect. Enter. Carlisle. <clears throat> Uh, Carlisle's going to move into the bushes up here just to spread out the group a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I'm also going to hide. Okay. 21. Hides. 21 hide successfully. Damn. Slip Ooh. in and hide behind the bushes. And I am going to use my bonus action to do that. And with my action, I'm going to prepare to shoot at any creature that runs towards us if okay. we are noticed. Okay. Andressa. All right. Um, Sistina is going to come over here, and Indrasa is going to move up here. Sorry, Carlisle. And then from here, she's going to cast Magnify Gravity, 20 foot diameter, 10 foot radius. She's going to try to hit many of. Sorry. Okay. Was well, it 20 foot? So you're going to. Okay. 20 foot diameter. So 10 foot radius, 20 foot diameter. We had it smaller last time, it should have been bigger. That's all right. Oh, really? Yes. What are you doing? I think we just did a 10 foot. I don't know. Uh, it no, it's a 10 foot radius sphere. <clears throat> Magnified gravity is a 10 foot radius sphere. Yes, that's what I said. Yeah. 10 foot radius, 20 mm -hmm. foot diameter. Oh, no. 10 that's foot radius is. sphere is. Uh, I'll show you. The radius is 10, so the diameter is 20. No? Uh, yeah. Yeah, but it's yes. uh, uh, the size we had last time was definitely it was, was definitely correct because it was literally this, a it's token. this. Yeah, I'm just gonna get the token for you so you can place right. it down where you want. Uh, this is a ten foot radius sphere. All right. Yeah, that's what we had can last I move time. It? Is it? I don't know. It's I'm pretty, pretty sure because we use this. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then I'll give you control over it. I'm just trying to grab it. Oh, there we go. Perfect. All right. We'll go... Mm, we'll go here. Okay. Well, I can't... Whatever, it's these four. I can't okay. move it that well. Uh, I'm going to do um, their turn. Uh, con save, please. Thank you. Con save. Coming in for round one. Fourteen. Uh... Okay, uh, I'm going to do the wildlings, the first and the second one first. Uh, the second one fails, the first one succeeds, and then the hyenas. Uh, the second one succeeds, the first one fails. So uh, this guy succeeded, right. and this guy succeeded. That is fantastic. So that is 17 points of damage nice because hit. of her... Um, some class feature, all to a spell. All right, 17 points of damage uh, uh, to uh, this one. I'm just getting the health. Uh, okay, yeah, uh, and then the half of that's uh, eight. So that actually kills both the wildlings. You see Ooh. as the damage... Fantastic. ...tears them apart, and... Damn. It kills both of these guys as well. Uh, oh. You see oh, it's all no four of them twist and break. Uh, twist them break and you see them all just going to get pulled apart and suddenly their bodies just collapse and crush to the ground as the gravity just completely <clears throat> right. forces them down. And all of the hyenas now become exactly aware of everyone that's not hiding. They all yes, suddenly turn around. They <laughs> and they start kind of barking towards each other as all eyes fall onto you guys. Uh, we'll do... I turn back and I'm like, I can only do that a few times. <laughs> We're going to do Morgane's turn. Um, <clears throat> what we got? She zoom. Yeah. <laughs> she crouches down and whispers uh, a chapter incantation and I'm going to expeditious retreat. Okay. And then she sprints forward to the nearest chattering null and i'm gonna attack it with a long sword okay 11. Uh, 11 to hit uh doesn't hit i'm afraid they're wearing hide armor okay. so you can see you just kind of <clears throat> glance off of the armor uh and it goes <laughs> dodges under you anything else 
that's my turn. Well, uh, pulling the order back up again, you can see as all of the gnolls start preparing, two of the hyenas that were prepared for the ritual tear to the ground, two of the wildlings drop down to the ground as well. The other hyena kind of just like barks, turns around confused. The body in the middle is kind of stretching, pulling against the ropes. As the summoner looks down at all of you and kind of barks in order, just points the staff onward. And the battle is about to begin. However, this fight will probably be more than an hour as we hit the three hour mark. It's probably best we leave this for next episode and come back to it then uh, with a okay. big old Sounds fight. Sounds good. Um, yeah. Against some <clears throat> gnolls. Uh, congrats, guys. Welcome to the fight. Uh, I can tell you as well, we are using the menu mechanic um, that Dungeons and Dragons, like some external things have done. It used to be in fourth edition where essentially... Uh, there are creatures here which are a lot weaker than your standard gnolls and kind of cannon fodder. So that's why you've got so many enemies on the board uh, and quick to kill. Phew. But um, yeah, we'll come back to the gnoll fight next week because I don't want to make you guys run over for two weeks in a row by quite a long way. And I imagine this fight will <laughs> be a fairly long Dude, one. I've missed so many combat swings and I have a plus eight to hit. You <laughs> ah, have damn. serious misfortune. I rolled a three. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, you've. I, I would love to see the statistic of like how many attacks you've done and how many you've missed, considering like. I think I've oh, missed sad. five and hit two, so far. Mm. I feel like you swung more than seven times. Mm -mm. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, here's your chance to kind of. It was. It was the AC is not much higher than what you swung. Um, well, uh, let's go around and do some shouts. Uh, we'll come back to it next week. Uh, I know we usually go a little bit longer than three hours, but I didn't want to keep you guys for super, super long tonight, and I knew the, the combat could be long. Uh, let's start off with Dodger. Hi, everybody. Uh, you can find me at Dex Bonus on pretty much everything. I stream almost every day. I, I drink coffee and play games, and it's a good time. Come hang out. Sam. Uh, I <laughs> truck and I fuck. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> you hesitate before saying that. You're like, <laughs> you're like, you should say it or not. There's there's no guys, I, to rub I was, was going to say I truck, and then I was like, what rhymes with truck? That was my hesitation. I was like, I can only think of fuck, so I'm just going to go. <laughs> uh, tomorrow. Uh, oh, what? Great job, tomorrow. Uh, Thank you, man. That's honestly more words than you've said in most of the shouts. <laughs> Bree. Yeah, double. he said two is double. <laughs> I'm Brie Bowen. Don't interrupt my fucking shout out. <laughs> or what? Or what? So you could start over, Brie Bowen. Sam, Sam you can't argue back. You're a nice character now. Shit not, my pants. Yeah, but you're not V in real life, okay? You're a bit. You're a giant baby. <laughs> giant baby. I'm gonna go cry. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm Brie Bowen. I don't know what I stream anymore. I forget. So true. It's true. So true. She does forget. Minecraft D&D &D with me. Oh, yes. hey. oh nice. Hey. Yeah. I Yo, it's fun. I know, I yeah, know. Uh, it's fun. You should have woken up for it, Shane. Uh, I, it's so fun. Uh, I was awake. Oh, really? <laughs> oh my god. Why did you join? Yeah, I know they invited me. I didn't know it was open. I put in the Sunforge chat. Fired. Anyone who wants to come and play it, no one responded except he for Sam. Well, in like a few of you responded. He did say that. Shane, yeah, I would have loved to have you. Last stream, Bree did a cute just Chang segment, and then she played Dark Tide, just so he goes on. <laughs> oh yeah, I play Dark Tide with Dodger. That's what I stream. I do streams oh. with Dodger all the time now. <laughs> yeah. <It's> cute. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's Shane, you go. Hey, I'm Shane. Um, I don't know what I'm streaming because I feel like I have so many things that I want to play right now. So I'm gonna stream something one. later today. Don't know what. Get a wheel and spin I'll roll it. All the dice, yeah. Mm, Wait, yeah, I have yeah. a thing. Yeah. I have a thing to send you, Shane. I also, Tell by the way, you. I've got like two and a half weeks on that DD &D server thing so you can if you want to play that i use my God, account so you don't have to spend to. money um it's really she, fun it's fun you'd love it, it is. and it, and it ends good cute. i won't spoil anything about it but i was like yo they made this in minecraft it was impressive uh oh, shane hawk though everyone check them out oh gee hello i'm all g uh, every once in a while i stream i don't know <laughs> when it is but it happens sometimes. Shout out to my dog who slept the entire D and D <gasps> session and nice. only just wow. now woke up. Oh, that's like that's America. Not happened in a really long time. Yeah, I, like my heart is very full right now. So <laughs> it's I'm riding also on that for the rest of the day. It's also OG's birthday tomorrow. It is. 
Oh, um, so my birthday tomorrow. Happy early birthday! Oh Happy mm. early birthday! Happy yeah, birthday! Thanks. Oh my god! At the age where it's not fun to have a birthday. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> You've got inspiration Shout for out. next fight, though. That's good. That's True. fun. I do. Yeah. I do have inspiration That's for next thing. week. Shout out to my mom for giving birth to me. Uh, she's actually in the hospital <laughs> right now. She had open heart oh, no. surgery a week and a half ago. Oh my ago. god! She's home. Tomorrow it's a birthday miracle. Oh Yay. good! Oh, Yay. That's sweet. Uh, times. Well, check everyone out. Uh, you can find me on this channel. Uh, I stream D and I stream games. Uh, I have no idea what I'm going to do this week. I'm going to try and move all of my files back onto my computer. That's hey. my my first primary thing to do. Yo. Uh, otherwise, there's a Patreon if you want to see behind the scenes stuff, some of the homebrew items that are up in the magical store, along with some of the creatures that are coming up, or some of the ones which you've already fought. Um, and yeah, thanks for all the support on Sunforge so far. It's very kind. We appreciate it. Um, and we'll be back uh, next week if there's no uh, interference. Uh, otherwise, yeah, we'll see you. We'll see you next week. We'll see you in the next one. Uh, thanks everyone for coming out. We'll push it. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Bye,